Southside Cabins. Auburn, rich in history, research, and year-round entertainment. Supported by Lee County's 116 restaurants and 1,200 hotel rooms. Visit the East Alabama Museum in Opelika, depicting life in Lee County since the early 1850s. And the southernmost covered bridge in Alabama, the Salem Shackle Bridge near Salem. Contact the Auburn Opelika Convention and Visitors Bureau, and we'll give you something to cheer about. The Super Savings Truck Experts. Why not? Surprise after another. Yesterday, of course, as you know, Gabriella Sabatini knocked off top-seeded and two-time defending champion Steffi Graf. That was a big story in itself. But today, 19-year-old Pete Sampras easily defeated... <laughs> Let's just learn from tonight, and uh, I'll, we'll have to look at the film to see what happened in the second half. But uh, you know, we uh, defensively we just we didn't we didn't shut them down. And offensively, we didn't put any points on the board in the second half. It's just just that simple. And I'm sure that there was mistakes out there that probably stopped ourselves. And and the same thing's true offense uh, defensively probably hurt ourselves also. I don't know what happened uh, with Memphis State over there tonight, but. Last time I heard, Ole Miss was beating us, but it'll be a different it'll be a different kind of football game than what you what you saw out there tonight. It won't be any finesse, and it'll be one of those old-fashioned bloodletting. So that's that's our style, and we ought to be ready for it. is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by your local Coca-Cola bottler. Coke, you can't beat the feeling. Colonial Bank, where we make good things happen for our customers every day. Osmos Pressure Treated Pine, only from Great Southern Wood. If it doesn't say Osmos on the little yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Golden Flake Snack Foods. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. Alpha Insurance. Call Alpha. Put your trust in people who care. Ziegler, since 1927. Get the taste that's seasoned to please. Pick Ziegler. All Pro Auto Parts, the professional's choice. Your Alabama John Deere Network, nothing runs like a deer. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Auburn opened its 98 football season last night with a 38-17 win over Cal State Fullerton, Pat Dye's 10th year. What did you think, Coach? Well, I thought it was some of the best and, and maybe some of the worst. <laughs> it was like two different ball games, first half and second half. And, and I think that um, the first half we're going to find that, that um, you know, there's going to be plenty to, to build around as far as the, the things that you, that you want to teach and the one that you want to get done and uh, great effort on several uh, situations. Uh, uh, Shane Washington's first touchdown was a great effort on his part, but the key play in it was a block thrown by Pedro Cherry and, and the long run by, by uh, uh, Alex Smith. Uh, he was stripped of the ball at the end when he pulled his muscle, uh, pulled muscle in, his, in his leg. And uh, there was about four Auburn guys there to recover the fumble when he fumbled. And uh, had to be great effort to get there. I think Victor Hall came up with it, but he, there were several other guys there that uh, just pursuing the ball. And uh, you know, defensively, I, I know that uh, we got uh, first half. We got a lot of got a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and and uh, you know, and then again the, the second half, we you know we didn't. Uh, we let them out of the hole a couple of times, and they hit a couple of passes, and had kind of one fluke play, and scored some points. But uh, I thought uh, Cal State, uh, Coach Murphy, and his staff, and, the, and that kid played hard in the ball game, and for the and, entire game. Yeah, and and uh, you know, and and I hope that uh, I hope that they got something out of the game, particularly because they they won the second half. Uh, they got something out of the second half that they can build around and help that football team and that program. I know that, uh, you know, they're a relatively young football program and, and uh, building, but uh, it was a good opener for us. And, and of course, uh, you know, Stan White uh, got off to, uh, I thought, a, a great start as our 
quarterback, and uh, there wasn't much that that, uh, that he did wrong last night. You know, we, you know, I think he what he threw four touchdown passes and mm -hmm. threw for three hundred something yards, and and uh, he uh, had several drops. So he uh, there's a lot of good things, like I said, that, that in the ball game that we can build around, and uh, you know, I don't. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't setting out to beat them 100 to nothing anyway. Yeah. So it was a, it was fine the way it turned out as far as I was concerned. It was a good win for us, and, and like, like I said, we played a lot of people and got a lot of teaching. Couldn't have been any more drama than yeah. that of Otis Mound. Tell us about that. Well, we had planned to, to hold uh, Otis out, and, and then Jesse was sitting there with four tailbacks, and, and uh, so we just redshirted Otis, and, and uh, he'd missed a lot. In fact, that's the first contact that he had had last night, really. Uh, he'd, he'd been uh, held out of practice for two weeks, two and a half weeks, and with a with a pull hamstring himself. And uh, at the half, we had lost Stacy Danley and Alex Smith, and we only had uh, Electron as a tailback. And we we made a decision. We didn't know whether to call to, to try to get uh, Joe Frazier from here in Montgomery or. Uh, Otis and and I told Coach Casey. I said, "Look, I said Joe's. You know, he played nose guard last year. At least Otis <laughs> has been in the game as a as a tailback. And uh, he came in and played some in the fourth quarter and did a good job. And you know, the biggest thing was, you know, he was safe with the football. And that's oh, yeah. that's what you got. To, that's where you start uh, if you're gonna play tailback at Auburn or carry the football at Auburn. You got to take care of it. So." Did a good job of it. Okay, let's go in the dressing room now. And our first, we, we talked to some of the new players this time, some of the players who are making their first start. And our first guy up, of course, is Otis Mounds, the tailback. I saw the two guys go down, so I knew we only had one running back, one tailback remaining. And I just kind of listened out. But I didn't know they were going to actually call me. Has this been the wildest night of your life, maybe? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, it has. When I saw the two guys go down, you know, I just stayed in the game, and, you know, I was in the game in the stands. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where we go from here, but I'm, I'm just going to keep working hard. All right, on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you think? Well, uh, it's about a 5 right now, you know. Uh, <laughs> we went out, and we, and we tried to, you know, we did as best we could, but we still got a lot of, we had a lot of mistakes, especially in the second half. You know, I know the penalties hurt us a lot, and uh, we just got to sit down tomorrow and try to get better by watching the film. I think I learned a lot out there. You know, it's very different from um, high school. And, uh, being redshirted last year, I, I grew up a lot, and I think I did fairly good to be starting my first game in college. It was, good. it was great to be out there. I'm ecstatic. Uh, it is great to be a, an Auburn Tiger. Uh, I was, I'm thrilled to be here. It's just great. On the first play, uh, you just was reading your key, and you just ran right into the ball, huh? Ran right into the ball. That's, that's why we practice every week on reading our keys and uh, dropping off receivers, and it pays off. Our coaches are, are exactly right. Seventy-seven thousand five hundred on a muggy September. Well, it was it was hot, but we had a great crowd and and uh, a lot of high school football teams. They have two. They got credentials. Yeah, haven't they? I'm telling you, they've <laughs> been in been in the battle a lot of times. Herbert Casey returns the first kickoff right there, and and uh, we're using Corey Lewis on, on our special teams now, and Corey had a. Big, big play on the special teams last night and caused a fumble. It uh, had the first pass, pass from Stan to Victor Hall. And nice to complete your first pass right, in your career, isn't it? Comes right back, and I think this is the third down play right, right. here where he hits uh, Shane Wasden with a kind of a corner route. Jim Bonwell comes in and kicks it, uh, what, a 47, 48 yard, 48 yard field goal, and we go up the first time we have the ball three to nothing. The defense is playing good. Good play right here. That's Carrick and Cunningham's first play as an Auburn Tiger, and he gets right down the middle of one, and that receiver drops the ball. Makes Good the pressure. Too. Good pressure right here. Carrick makes the tackle, and he's having fun. That's the way it ought to be played. As uh, David David Rocco making a big play on the draw play on that fullback or that running back. David looked like he made a, made a lot of plays last night. As Eddie Blake, Eddie didn't dress out last night, had a sprained ankle. As Stan throwing to uh, Tony Russell. Well, he uh, passed it around to the receivers. Well, he? that's good. And that's, a, that's uh, 
to me, a very exciting young football player in, in Tony Richardson right there. That, and uh, you can see once in this game, but I looked at the tape last night, and it was a great effort on the part of Shane Washington, a great block right there by Pedro Cherry that uh, sprung him on the touchdown. And this is what I call playing football without the football right there with, with uh, Pedro Cherry making that key block to get him in the end zone. I mean, that's, that's the exciting things, and that's the things that, to me that we can build around. And the, the little things in football that make a difference is not always a big one. There's a fine play by Mike Campbell. And Third and five here. We got pressure. There's another fine play by uh, Mike Campbell. I guess that was a quarterback draw, and they hurt us with a quarterback draw two or three times. And Later they in spread the people out all over the field, and, and uh, you could just... Uh, He's standing right here. He throws a nice, soft, easy pass to catch and great poise and just uh, very mature for, of course, he's a redshirt freshman. As Darrell Williams and Electron has had a, had a great fall practice and, and uh, of course, he worked extremely hard all summer and probably reported in the best condition anybody on the football team is Dale Overton. All of our little receivers played well last night, and, of course, they played just like they've been playing this fall. There's Tony Russell catching about a 12-yard touchdown pass. They came with a blitz, left him uncovered, and, and uh, Stan hit a couple of them like that last night where, where they left our wideouts uncovered and, and uh, trying to disguise a blitz and brought them, and he ended up hitting them. Not bad for that's, a walk-on. That's Alex Thomas, and Alex uh, had some big plays last night, had a big fumble recovery in the, in the second half. But Alex Thomas was a key player in our defense and that was probably the finest catch in the ball game by Pedro Cherry coming across the middle and just laid out and went up in the air and, and got it. We don't show his long <coughs> touchdown as his call back. That's uh, Stan hitting Alex Smith coming out of the backfield and I hope Alex can get back. He's, he's got a, here's a great run. That's, uh, that's what we've been looking for Herbert Casey to do since he got to Auburn. He makes that one miss. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Make six guys miss him on a 20-yard touchdown run. And so Auburn scores the first four possessions. That's a uh, fine play right there. Short yard situation. There's Richard Shea and John Wilson and Mike Campbell and there's Alex Thomas. And, uh, Walter Tate and, and um, Reggie Barlow. There's a stand thrown out of the end zone, throws big tight end, Chris Gray. Makes a nice play and gets the ball out. Gives us a little breathing room. Here's a, here's a long run by Alex Smith. Good blocking. Goodness, I wish you could run that back and look at it again because that's one of the plays right there where, where uh, Tony Richardson just turned that linebacker upside down. There's a, the there's a strip of the ball. And look at the, look at the Auburn people around that football down there to recover it and and uh those are the things that win big games coach i believe was that stan getting up off that pile up down there <laughs> I, don't know. Huh, I believe it was <laughs> but uh there's a touchdown run by by uh, electron made it 31 to 3 and you know we hadn't done a lot wrong right here we got a couple of penalties in the drive right here there's david rocker pressure on the quarterback and causing the fumble they come up with it Mike Campbell again on a nice play. Walter Tate. And he and Richard Shea alternated at nose guard last night. And Lamar Rogers had some big plays in the defensive line. And just uh, good effort defensively the first half and good effort offensively. And we didn't do a lot wrong except for a couple of penalties offensively and, and that, uh, that stopped one drive and had one touchdown call back. 31 to 3 at the half. We'll return in just a moment. The one winners. It's easy to spot the winners because they put 100% in everything they do. They want to be the best. And it's easy to spot winners when you shop for snacks. Just look for Golden Flake. Golden Flake has been supporting winning programs for over 60 years. Be a part of that winning tradition in the Golden Flake football van sweepstakes. Look for details where you shop for Golden Flake. You're always a winner with Golden Flake. <laughs> Coach, have you, uh, have you renewed well, your tag? Well, it's, a, it's that time of year again to, to 
either go out and buy your license to learn Auburn Tag, the automobile. We don't have one up here with us today, but uh, go buy one or renew your old one or whatever. Fifty dollars, and most of it, uh, just a couple Those of dollars. Auburn yeah. University academic, uh, academic scholarship. Contact your county probate offices. We'll be back to start the uh, second half of play in just a minute. Well, I tell you what, right now when I'm playing ball, um, and there's a ton of people in the stands yelling, yelling, and then you'll hear somebody say War Eagle or I'm from Auburn, and that catches my uh, uh, attention right there. I turn and look and I wave, and um, it's nice to know that people, um, whenever they leave Auburn or wherever they go, they still carry that Auburn spirit with them. Since spring, I've been working out with an exciting new team. It's got strength and power, speed for long yardage. And can it run complicated patterns? This group can really cut it. Plus, there's a couple on this team that really know how to work the end zone. The surprising thing about this bunch is they're all named John. You've got to see this John Deere team. Don't you say we ought to play a public service commercial during this this part of the game? <laughs> yeah. That's uh, Stan throwing to, to Greg Taylor, and Greg Taylor's had a great fall practice, and there's a nice run by Electron, and as again, that big fullback, freshman fullback, uh, Tony Richardson out there blocking in front of him. And he was one step away there. I would say he, he, they, that, uh, his, this Tony coming. Richardson running right here now, and, and, uh, I haven't been as impressed with his running as I have been his blocking his, uh, and his overall aggressiveness, but that's a pretty good run right there. <laughs> it, uh, there's a fine throw right here and an almost great catch by Pedro Cherry. And that, uh, I guess that would have been too much in one night. <laughs> there's Lamar Rogers putting the heat on that quarterback and coming up with a big sack. and. Mike Campbell right there, and as Otis Mounds. Getting ready to go. <laughs> yep, there's good pressure right there by, by uh, David Rocker and, and uh, Ricky Sutton, and John Wilson makes the sack. There's pressure here, and they come up with a nice play that quarterback does, and there's Corey Barlow and Eric Ramsey and John Wiley. And just did a good job. You know, they, you got to give them credit for it. They, they executed. And, Got the ball in the end zone. And Here comes a wild one. Yeah, this ball is tipped up, kicked up, kicked again, and that tailback caught it right there. And, and we kind of, you know, they kind of caught us flat for it. We, it Boy, they were really into the game here, Coach. Well, they were exercised. Yeah, they, they have every right to be. Of course, you know, we come right back like a good football team is supposed to, and there's a great throw and catch right there on the part of Pedro Cherry in traffic. And uh, in the fourth so we, quarter take, now. we take it right on down, and there's a key play right here. I believe that was third or fourth. Was that was third, fourth, down. fourth down fourth play down right there? Fourth down and four, yes. And they get a face mask and put the ball down a little closer. And uh, it's a bootleg right here, and Dan finds Greg Taylor in the end corner of the end zone for the touchdown, and that makes it 38 17. And right there is the last play that Dan played, and that's where he got his stitches. He got I don't know how many he got last night. I took, him over, I took him over to the doctor after the ball game. And, and uh, there's Reggie Barlow and, and uh, Darrell Crawford. Heat on the quarterback. There's Alex Thomas. And Alex is playing linebacker a lot on our nickel and dime stuff. And like I said, it's very valuable. There's uh, Frank McIntosh in there and there's Otis Mounds at tailback. We got a, we played a lot, a lot, most of these guys here, red shirt freshmen, there's Chris Sears and Keithlin and Peapot Brown and Anthony Redman and Greg Thompson and Ernest Wallace. And Otis Mann's a freshman out of Miami. Fred, Fred Baxter and there's Jess Simpson and Sean Carter and Melvin Hines. Lou Priester, all in there. There's a nice throw and catch to, to great block by Fred Baxter and throw and catch to, to John Stewart. 
There's Jeff Catullo over there congratulating him. Ray Stopper for a week. And there's a uh, fine play by David Rocker. There's Heat's own. Good play again by, by uh, Alex Thomas and pressure on the quarterback. I mean, that's batted down by Lamar Rogers. There's James Willis, played a lot last night, played well. Corey Barlow making a nice play out in the open field. And that's the end of the ball game. And like I said, we did lots of things right, and lots of things in a positive way that we can build around. And we did a lot of things wrong that we can certainly learn from and, and uh, correct. And we're a long way from being the kind of football team we're going to have to be to, to play this schedule we got and be successful. Should be a good preparation week with the things you Well, got you know, our, our football players are smart enough to know that, uh, that Ole Miss and Coach Brewer and his players and football team is a lot different than Cal State Fullington and playing in Jackson and uh, they came from behind last night and won a close ball game. Their, their kids are, you know, used to winning. They won last year and, and uh, you know, it'll be a tremendous challenge for our football team and, and uh, one that we ought to be looking forward to. We'll be back to talk a little bit more about Ole Miss in just a minute. Bill, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank the people that make a game like that last night possible. I, first of all, my coaching staff, offense and defensive staff, and the job and the work that they do with our football players and the team, and Pub Waltrip and the training staff, and Frank Cox and the equipment people, and uh, Hyman Wall and all of our administrative staff, uh, Dr. Martin and the administration at the school, the faculty and the students, and the board of trustees and all our many fans that, that support the, the football team. It takes everybody pulling together to, to make it what it is and have the fun that we've had over the last few years. And, and I personally want to thank all of them for the part that they play. Thank you, Coach. No TV next week. The Auburn Expanded Radio Network will be on the air at 11.30. And Pat Dye says you may be able to get some of those old Miss tickets if you work hard at it. We'll see you with a replay next Sunday. Coach Dye's apparel provided by Brooks Brothers in the River Chase Galleria, Birmingham. This has been the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. common goal. If you get knocked down, you must get up and try harder. Your opponent may be bigger and stronger. Montgomery. credit to them folks in the other dressing room over there. We, we, you know, they fought hard throughout the football game, and but uh, I also give you a lot of credit. At, uh, at the end, when you had to, when you had to do, you did what you had to do in the end to, to win the football game. And it's a, it's a, it's a team sport. And uh, today the defense comes up with two big plays in the ball game. It, it makes a lot of difference. And it's going to be those days. So. It's, a, it's one that I hope we can learn from, benefit from. I know that when we look at the films and, and, and uh, study them and analyze it, you're going to see that we stopped ourselves far more than, than uh, Mississippi stopped us with the mistakes that we made. So, again, man, let's learn from it and, and uh, be a better football team because of it. This 
is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by your local Coca-Cola bottler. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday in Jackson, Mississippi, an old-fashioned SEC football battle with Auburn beating Ole Miss 24 to 10. Coach, uh, did you make it through? Uh, still, I believe it's the hottest uh, football game that I've ever been around in my life. Now, I know it gets hot on AstroTurf, but in that stadium yesterday, the, it, it, it was a big rain on Friday, and the steam, I mean, it was actually like a steam bath. And uh, that that's a horseshoe stadium, and, and uh, there's no, it wasn't a breath of air, and, and I don't know how hot it was, but uh, it was hot, and it was a gallant effort by both football teams. What a battle. Uh, what a battle. Ole Miss, uh, you know, I, I, I went over and talked to Coach Brewer after the ball game, and you got to give them tremendous uh, credit along with our kids. And, but uh, coming down the stretch in the fourth quarter, uh, they wouldn't back off, and we didn't back up. We just kept coming and kept coming, and... And finally, we struck the final fl final blow. Is about what it amounted to. But they never quit, never gave up, and and uh, and 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 it will be good for our football team. And it was exactly, in my opinion, what what this football team needed. Uh, we came from behind, and and I mean, when we when we got behind right after the half, you know, we took the ball straight down the field and and put it in the end zone for a touchdown, and and which is the mark of a championship football team. And then. In the late stages of the game, we won it on defense. We sure and, did. And, uh, and uh, uh, Richie Neal had a tremendous punt that, that uh, changed the ends of the field for us one time. So there's a lot of good things in the ball game, uh, again, that we can build around. But the, we also made a lot of mistakes that we got to correct. And uh, we got to be a lot better football team when we play Tennessee than we were yesterday. Okay, let's go into the dressing room now and talk first to number 10, James Joseph, who, who was such a big factor in the game. It was a rough ball game. Uh, we knew it was going to be tough coming in because Ole Miss is a very good football team. And we just had a bunch of guys to step forward and take charge. Uh, defense did the thing they had to do to win the game and offense help. It was just all, all around effort. Started running the football today like you have to run against good teams to win in the SEC. Well, there's no doubt. We knew that coming in because of the situation with staying at quarterback. Just in case team wanted to just keep pressing or uh, trying to get to him, we knew we had to stay, have some kind of balance attack. In the offensive line, you have to get those guys credit because they did it up front when we had to have it. Down at the end, you still had enough to get to the passer, and I, I think that was a critical point of the game, don't you think? Almost definitely. I think um, one thing we noticed early in the game was um, that they didn't have any rotation up front, and we, we could tell by the, the heat and the humidity that our rotation would, would definitely be an, an advantage, and you could tell definitely in the fourth quarter that we used it to our utmost. Well, you had a lot of big plays today, buddy. Well, I guess it's just a part of the defense growing up. Coach has been telling us all week that we just got to grow up and be men and suck it up and go when we can't go no more. And that's what we did this evening against a, a bit, very good Ole Miss team. Yeah. The outside linebackers came together, defensive line, DBs, linebackers, everybody just came together and just said we cannot be beat. Yeah, they blessed us. And uh, Corner, uh, he came up on a pass, pass for the play a little bit, and I adjusted to it. And I got it to him and I ran it on in. I don't know, it's something about, but whenever he's in the game, he, keep, he keeps the team uh, going and he pulls the team as much as he can. How was this for, for the offensive line to come from behind? I think it was a good uh, victory for us. Um, that heat played a big factor. Um, we, we played tough. Um, they, you got to give credit to their defense. Their defense was real good. Um, but I think we played together as a unit for, for a change. You know, it was a good feeling coming back from behind, but we're going to have to get a lot more consistent on offense. And, uh, you know, we made, a lot, we made a lot of mistakes, and I made a lot of mistakes, and I'm just going to sit down and watch the film and try to learn from it. Like I said, the guys up front, getting pressure on the quarterback, a seven-step drop, which, you know, they, they couldn't do. Our guys were, you know, all over them, so they had to go to the sprint out pass, uh, which was a flood route, and, uh, you know, as a strong safety, you know, your job is to, uh, to get underneath one, and I was just surprised that, you know, when he threw, when he threw the football because, you know, it, it, it wasn't a play. I was uh, right there. Memorial Stadium in Jackson on a hot day. And, well, uh, I'll tell you what, that guy right there had his team ready to play, but that didn't come as any surprise to me, and I don't think it did our players he, either. He they said were. you were so kind to him after the game, you thought he'd won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a good guy, and he's a fun guy. And there's Pedro Cherry, and he is really playing well for us right now. Runs the ball, I think, out close to the 40-yard line and had three big catches in the game and returned two or three other. First play of the game, Stan hits... Shane Washington over the middle, and uh, we take this one in, and it doesn't look like it's going to be any trouble. James Joseph is running like old James Joseph in style and 
Well, he made a lot of played big a plays. Boy, played. Oh, great. I wish you could just run that back and look at it again. James Joseph, key, key block on that play right there. Came back and picked up a linebacker. Mm -hmm. Here stands throwing to Pedro on a, uh, I believe that was a key third down play right there where we converted, mm -hmm. long yardage. And now from there, we, we put it in James's hand every time till he gets it across the goal line and we run him behind Rob Selby and Tim Tillman and and uh, oh. the freshman fullback Tony Richardson and Ed King pulling up through the hole and Bob Meeks and look at that block. Oh, as Ed pulling right through there on the on the touchdown run and just uh, I see Ed coming right there getting that blocking at number 44 and James puts it in and we take it right in the score and and uh, you know it was a it was a classic opening drive but. We stalled after that, but we didn't defensively. We were scratching and getting around the quarterback, and that was Carrick and Cunningham, and it looks like somebody's making a play there. It's pressured by Darrell Crawford and a sack by Ricky Sutton, and we just uh, we harassed our quarterbacks all day long yesterday, and it was a great play on the part of Benny Pierce. Benny came in, and we, had, we actually had to return on, but uh, he saw that little crease in there and came, and and block the punt, we get a safety, and then of course we get the ball right back, and but that makes it nine to nothing with not much gone in the game, and maybe it was too easy, too quick, because it certainly wasn't easy after this. <laughs> As uh, Shane Watson returning the kick after the safety, and we got the ball out there in the middle of the field in good shape. As James Joseph again running we played a lot of people yesterday, and as Big Eddie Blake played his first thing, but he was, you know, he was, here. he was, he was one-legged, but we did get him in the ball game, which was good. But uh, Anthony Redmond, and he will come back on defense, and as Fernando Horn and Walter Tate and John Wilson, and there's another fine play right there. Well, that's not this one. I was thinking that was a short yard play. I'm not even sure who that was made to play there. Third and two coming right here. Uh, John Wiley had a lot of big plays. That's, that's the one I was thinking about there. Uh, mm -hmm. Lamar, Lamar Rogers and, and uh, Richard Shea and, and James Willis. Second quarter now. Hills will play a lot of defense now. As pressure by, by Reggie Barlow. Reggie had some uh, big rushes and big plays and there's another one right there. He hits the quarterback in the back, and he throws the ball up in the stands. Here's a freshman, uh, Tony Richardson, making a nice run on a, just a little hunt play inside. And Tony sprained his ankle a little bit there yesterday and, and uh, missed most of the ball game because of it. Second and 14. There's another big play, a great catch right in the middle of traffic by Pedro Cherries. Stan threaded the needle, and Pedro came up with it. Third and two. And this is a play right here that, that uh, Stan White will complete that pass 99 out of 100 times. And, and, uh, but yesterday was one of those times we didn't complete it. There's David Rocker and, and James Willis. And, and, uh, they barely make the first down here. There's Benny Pierce and Carrick and Cunningham and Corey Barlow. And a play, fine play by Larry Young right here on the reverse. As Fernando Horn. Eric and they having a good time. We're playing a lot of people on defense. Here comes their uh, touchdown drive late in the quarter. That cool little quarterback, Luke, does a nice job. And uh, Billy told me, Coach Brewer told me after the ball game that uh, he, he got hit in the head and dazed. And, but he makes a nice run right here. And John Wiley makes a game-saving cutback right there, I guess you'd say. And then Ricky Sutton runs him down from behind. And Ricky Sutton playing playing outside linebacker and runs a guy down 30 yards downfield, you know he's hustling and playing hard. And as a uh, throw, a nice throw and catch on that part, and they get behind the guy and catch the first touchdown. Nine to seven at the half. We'll be back in just a moment. The Auburn Network is preparing a video chronicling the decade of the 80s, the dire era of Auburn football. Let's show you some ex excerpts of, of that video. looking forward to this challenge with the great anticipation, a lot of enthusiasm. As they see, our farms 
in blue celebrants are tearing down the goalposts in this monumental victory, ladies and gentlemen, as the Auburn Tigers have defeated the Alabama Crimson Tide by the score of 23 to 22. Jesse, and he's going to give it to Tillman on the end of the round. The 10, the 5, Tillman, he's in! Touchdown, Auburn! Touchdown, Auburn! You are the champion of the best football conference in America. Separation play. Black's going to throw in the end zone. Got to be wide open. In a one-hour video presentation, Auburn, the decade of the 80s, tells the complete story of the greatest decade in Auburn history. From the hiring of Pat Dye as head coach in 1981 to Bo Jackson's Heisman career as a Tiger. To three consecutive SEC championships. Plus, all the greatest plays of a remarkable decade. The decade of the 80s. Coming soon to video cassette. Some precious moments. Uh, you, you need to get well, to it you, right away. You know, uh, I guess you live so much in the in the present and look into the future that you forget about the past, but that brings back some some fun times and some precious memories. Here's how you can get yours by sending $29.95 plus five dollars postage tax and handling to decade video. P.O. Box 351, Auburn, Alabama, 36831-0351. It'll be ready in the next couple of weeks, so get yours in right away. We'll be back in just a minute. Wrapped about the midfield of 40-yard line, something like that, on the, on, the, uh, on the kickoff return. And there's Randy Ball and they find some running back making a nice run with the, on, on the option. And third and eight. We get, pre we get pressure to the quarterback, and that's that third quarterback. The other two kids have been knocked out of the ball game. And... They bring, bring uh, I believe his name is Robinson, in the ball game, and he makes a nice run on a scramble, and his ball went on the draw. He is a fine back, but what a fine tackle by John Wiley. I mean, that's dead down the center and turns him upside down. And here's, a, a, again, that's sacked by David Rocker, and there's Ricky Sutton, close, and, and uh, we had a lot of big plays on defense yesterday. There's uh, Richard Shea got a hold of him and makes him throw it out of bounds. Stops the drive. Stops the drive and they kick the field goal and, and they go up uh, 10 to 9. But uh, this is probably the most impressive thing we did, in my opinion, offensively yesterday. It begins right here, too. Pedro Cherry runs the ball back out to the 40, uh, what? 41. 41 yard line and, and, uh, and we go right to work. I don't, uh, I don't know that as James Joseph just breaking right behind uh, Wayne Gandy and, and uh, Ed King and Bob Meeks and Tillman and Sel uh, Selby. Hmm. There's a running again inside and just cutting and slashing and making things happen. And here they come with the blitz, and this is what you got to make them do. When they, come, when they, when they commit to people, you got to make them pay. And uh, that was a big play for... Auburn in a big place for Stan White and Greg Taylor. Just uh, execution, and I'm not sure that... Uh, Here's the two-point play. <coughs> you call timeout. That was, big in, that was big in the ball game. And we had a little confusion on the sideline yesterday. And I mean, it, it, it wasn't... Uh, everybody assumed we were going to kick one, but we had to go for two because of the score indicated. There's Reggie Barlow and James Willis. As uh, Reggie Barlow again hits him in the back of the head, and I don't know whether that was a fumble or whatever, but John Wilson's there, and Fernando Horn, and Walter Tate got on the ball, and here we come again. And there's John Wilson. He's sacking the quarterback and causing the fumble, and Fernando's there. And the, uh, Here's a third and one play on their next drive. Stop the drive. That was uh, Walter Tate causing that fumble, and we come up with it. It was uh, uh, James Willis and... We got a lot of people around the football, and 
Now we're in all the fourth quarter. Big, all those big plays on defense, we need every one of them. As of uh, Lamar Rogers making a sack. And, uh, and all Anthony, Anthony Judge is in there. And all this heat, see. Coach, those guys are still, they well, still had something. <coughs> they were playing hard and kept, they kept coming and kept coming. And a little bumping and shoving down there on both sides, I think, is defended by Eric Ramsey and They're John Wiley. Series now. But we are, we are relentless rushing the passer here in the, in the late stages of this ball game. And there's no question. They're out at the 47. Uh, that qu little quarterback that made a run in the first half comes back, makes another fine run, and John Wiley again makes a game-saving tackle. And that looks like that guy right there is excited about something. <laughs> They're at 22 now. As uh, Carrick and Cunningham, and they didn't make much running inside against us yesterday. They broke a couple of little old plays in the crease. Fine play by Benny Pierce and, and uh, Darrell Crawford. And Darrell Crawford just Here played him a big play. Just, a big play. As uh, I believe that's Ricky Sutton and, and Walter Tate and, and they miss uh, a field Fernando, goal after that. Fernando Horn uh, steamrolling the guy, and there's pressure and pressure by that was a fumble who was that that uh, was that was that uh, rocker rocker whoever caused the mm -hmm. caused the fumble and but the uh, Reggie Barlow was there and it just uh, All right, their final final series now with uh, a minute and 14 to go is uh, Lamar has more pressure by as Fernando you can see we're might miss him, but we're trying to get there. And there's James Willis and, and uh, Richard Shea and Mike Campbell there. And Mike Campbell's right in his face. And this is the, that's the final blow where the guy just, you know, he, he, he was just had too much pressure on him. And it was a pressure. Desperation pass to try to get the get guys back in the game and threw it right to Dennis Wallace. And Dennis ran in for the touchdown. We'll be back in just a moment. We have one that'll probably be just like this one with Tennessee. Well, it, uh, it's Tennessee has got a great football team, and, and they're playing extremely well, and uh, they're an experienced football team. And um, if we're as good as people say we are, then it'll be a great matchup. And it'll be a night game? It'll be a night game. Play. I, I think it's going to be on uh, ESPN television. should kick it off around 6 o'clock or so. Okay, and we'll have the replay for you two weeks from today. Thank you. We'll see you then. Coach Dye's apparel provided by... what we did get tonight <coughs> that is a lot more important than X's and O's and, and uh, strategy and all of those things is that you come out of the game with a with the heart of a champion and uh, you can be champions. You can be champions. I'm just going to tell you flat out, man. Uh, if you wear that blue jersey and you play for me, there ain't going to be no quit in you. We, get, we, won't, we won't win every battle, individually or as a team, maybe. But we ain't never going to quit. I hope that we grew up a great deal tonight. And Lord knows our quarterback did. I uh, stand. That was about as courageous in the way yet. Yeah. That was about as courageous in the second half. That, uh, but that's what you're supposed to do. Let's let this one sink in good, and when we come back.
could work on Monday. There ought to be a, there ought to be a special kind of gleam in your eye, just knowing what kind of folks you got around you. The Auburn Football Review. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Last night at Auburn, the Tigers 17 down, come back to tie Tennessee 26-26. Just when you've seen them all, Coach, you see another one like this. Well, it was a it was a great football game, Phil, and um, one that uh, a lot of our young people grew up in, and um, it was one that that uh, would have liked to have won it. But I think that uh, what the team just played in the second half is, is uh, and, and what it'll mean to them the rest of this year, and, and not only that, the rest of their lives, is uh, far more important than winning the football game. If we'd have gone out and won by two or three touchdowns, it wouldn't have been near as important as what happened uh, in that, on that field last night. And in face of all of the, <coughs> the things that went against them, you know, the, the, it's, it's always been my feeling and it's my the way, the way I, philosophy, I guess, uh, about life. It's not, how you, it's not how you handle the good days and the good things. It's how you handle the bad ones that determine whether you're going to be a champion or a chump. <laughs> and uh, I think last night the things that our football team just played uh, was, uh, was a mark of a champion. You know, we've got the rest of the season to play to see if that's, you know, really true or not. But, uh, you know, I, I, the things that happened in the first half, we self-destructed. And <coughs> I really I really and truly felt at the half, when I looked at the stats and I saw Tennessee had only made five first downs and, and uh, they had, uh, they had uh, take out the 80-yard touchdown pass, which came on one play, they had less than 100 yards. And... Uh, We'd had the ball 20 minutes, and they'd had it 10. I knew that if, if we would eliminate the mistakes and, and, and uh, you know, physically we weren't getting overpowered and, and it was just a matter of us, you know, playing and doing the things we had to do to get back in the game. The only thing I didn't plan on was I planned for us to score when we got the ball down that close <laughs> in the third quarter, and I figured that we would do what we did in the, in the fourth quarter, and we'd win the ball game. But it didn't happen like that. We didn't score, and they took the ball and drove it 70 yards for a touchdown, which you got to give Tennessee credit for that. All right, let's go in the dressing room now and talk first to those little wide outs who had such a big night. Uh, it's a 20-yard comeback, but the, but what uh, their DBs were doing was just sitting there like, like they knew we was going to run it. And so I just had to run just like an inside route and just go around him and just jump up over the ball. Stan, again, deserves all the credit for that, for trusting me enough to throw it up like that. Makes you feel like uh, y'all are going somewhere. Yes, sir, it sure does. What is a playing like this and coming back and not quitting, what does this do for these young guys? It, it shows them that uh, we can be a championship team. And, you know, I'm just glad to be a part of Auburn. And, and uh, I'll try to show all the leadership I can. How many times did you reach in your sack tonight for that special one? Well, we, we were all on the offensive staff and Coach Dye along too, reaching in our, in our little sack of goodies a, a bunch tonight. And, uh, thank God we had some, some great remember? kids out there playing and playing their guts out and letting, letting their guts on the line on every down to try to try to do something to help their team win. And feel a little older after this game? Well, yeah, I feel like I've been growing up a little bit. You know, Victor Hall, you know, was hurt, and I just stepped in in position. I, Coach Dodd told me to step in and do the best I can do, and I just came in and did the best, you know, that I can do. Did last year ever into your mind as you were making all those snaps? Oh, uh, no, sir. Uh, before the game, I was, you know, thinking about it, you know, and before the game, we were watching films of last year, and uh, it never entered my mind once I got in there. It was just a totally different game. It was a whole new year, so it never entered my mind during the game. What's this going to do to this team, you think? Um, it brings us closer together. I think we, all of us can get together and play as a team now, and we know who's going to play, who's not. Basically, uh, it was a screenplay, as you saw. Uh, basically, I read it, and uh, I get to get all the credit to the defensive line. You know, they went with the guys, and they took up the blockers, and they left me to run free and go in and make the play. And in a game like this, you know, you got to sacrifice. And I think by far we've got some of the most unselfish guys, if not only in the conference, in the nation. Beautiful night for the game. Absolutely packed stadium. Prime time, and it was prime. <laughs>
They I tell you, the, the, the atmosphere last night was, and, and uh, kid, we walked from the stadium. I mean, it was, wasn't, it wasn't like, there was a great play by David Rockers, knocked the ball loose on, and I believe that's John Wiley that got on it, and we get the first break of the ball game, and thing goes back and forth here, and we just, we just play like a young football team. Here's another great play by Corey Barlow. Makes the interception and, and <coughs> gives us the ball again. And but you still can't we move. Turn, we give it back to them, either on a turnover or as a fine play by Derek Ram, uh, Eric Ramsey. Tennessee's got great wide receivers and a big, strong offensive line. We knew coming in, they were powerful, explosive offensive football team. And, uh, you know, we didn't do anything offensively the first half to help our defense. You're going to see there's... Uh, Carrington Cunningham and uh, that was a big play there. Big play, Lamar Rogers and there's John Wiley coming up to help him and they kick another field goal and go up six to nothing here and then uh, they come back and, and complete a 80 yard touchdown pass. And In the second <coughs> quarter now. There's a great play right here by by uh, Dennis Wallace. Makes a play. Dennis makes a great hit later in the ball game, but here's that was the big, big. play. It's a no. super great play by Eric Ramsey. We intercepted three passes. For, you know, it's four turnovers. They had four turnovers the first qu uh, half. We had three and not a turnover in the second half. Strange part about the ball game. Here's a great play on the part of Tennessee. Andy Kelly hits Harper, that big wide receiver. And, you know, I knew he, this guy was a great athlete. I just didn't realize he could run as fast as he could run. And, uh, but, he, but we had a blitz zone, and that's the reason we don't blitz a lot. Uh, you know, there's a great play right there, again, by David Rock and Carrick and Cunningham. Stopping, stopping him, him on a two-point play, and that was big now. Every, of course, in a ball game like this, every snap and every play is big. And uh, we have got to get something going. We're behind 13 to, to nothing now, I guess. And, and, uh, 12 to nothing, yeah. That's a fine play by, by uh, Stan White, and here's a, here's a big play for Tennessee. Hits uh, James from behind, and and they take it down to the six-yard line. Can they take it the in company. from there. And mm. you said we came from uh, 17 down, down. It was 19 down, I believe, wasn't it? Because they score, they score right here and go up 19 to nothing. Right, right. And we take it back and, and kick a field goal right before the half and make it 19 to 3. And uh, this is the drive right now to, I guess, to, to get the field goal. <coughs> Tennessee did a great job defensively against us and, and mixed it up, put a lot of pressure, came with a lot of blitzes, and, and no doubt that the last night's game is going to be a, a great uh, confidence builder for Stan White. He's hitting Shane Watson over the middle there, and, and uh, all our little wide receivers came up with big plays and clutch catches. Here's Greg Taylor right in the middle of three Tennessee guys and goes up and catches the football, and Dale Overton makes a great clutch catch for the touchdown late in the ball game. We kick a field goal here. At that time, I mean, we got to score three times anyway, mm -hmm. so the, uh, that, that puts us 16 behind. We score two touchdowns, make two it, go for two twice, and it's, we got a tie ball game. So, I mean, you know, I'm thinking right now about how we're going to get back in the game and, and, and have a chance to win it. And we'll be back in just a minute. The present you've been looking for, the one-hour video, Auburn football, the decade of the 80s. Still, it's got, uh, it goes back and starts with the foundation back in 81, and Edmund Nelson's and Dennis Skutak and Mark Dorn and Bob Harris's and all those players that hung with us to early to, to make it uh, our program what it is today. The championship team in 83 and then the championship teams in the late 80s and it's got a lot of great shots and scenes and uh, tremendous memories over the 10 years. And, and uh, if you're Auburn, then you need one. I, I agree, Coach. And uh, you can send $29.95 plus $5 for postage, tax, and handling to Decade Video, P.O. Box 351, Auburn, Alabama, 36831-0351. Order as many as you need. We'll be back in just a minute. Uh, the way Coach Jordan coached... Uh, the influence that he had on the players at that time uh, uh, helped you to deal with the uh, uh, the problem that you have and how to deal with people. 
And that's what about any business is, is just dealing with people. You know, most people have got to be anywhere uh, else except at the dentist. And uh, it's just a challenge to try to make them uh, comfortable and relaxed and uh, get to talk a lot of football. Here's the fireworks that's just started the second half. <laughs> Were there any fireworks in the oh, dressing room? <laughs> Well, no, I tell you, it was kind of quiet, and, and uh, you know, we just, I, I, I looked at the, what happened in the first half, and I knew we could win the football game. Our defense, our kicking, started off with the kicking game, we held them back. And our defense went out and got the football. We got the ball in midfield, of, you know, thereabouts, and, and took it right on down. You know, I thought that uh, Blackthorn and James Joseph both ran the ball well last night, and we got in a situation where we couldn't run the ball a great deal. It's a good run by James here, and uh, I think our offensive line did a good job of protecting Stan through it 58 times, and uh, played a lot of young people last night. There, you know, Wayne Gandy and, and uh, Anthony Redmond and uh, those guys, uh, Greg Thompson. Uh, of course, the, the older guy there's James. We run inside. We're taking it on down. Here's a fine run right here by a true freshman, uh, Tony Richardson. This football team, if they got what I think they got, they're going to get better. Fourth down play here. <clears throat> well, that, uh, that was probably my mistake right there for not kicking the field goal. And, uh, you know, if you in this business, you've got to have guts enough to make those calls and you've got to have guts enough to live with them when they don't work. <laughs> and right. I, was, I just thought we needed a touchdown. We needed, we'd done everything right down the line. And, you know, sometimes you feel like, oh. look at that, what a fine football play by Dennis Wallace right there down the center of that big old Tennessee fullback and knocked him backwards. Here comes pressure on Andy Kidd and makes him throw it out. So we come right back and get the ball. The other thing, the other thing is I knew that we had them backed up in the way we were playing defense that Tennessee was going to be fairly conservative. So we we're going to get the ball back out in field position again. Dan comes back here and hits Pedro Cherry right on the sideline and, and uh, you know, it's, it's uh, one of those things where you know, Stan, is, if you give him time, our wide outs are going to get open and, and uh, he's going to get the football to him. There's a fine little play on the counter. He had only one sack. For Darryl Williams. I'm not really sure. If, uh, here's a pump sack. fake and go deep to Greg Taylor. Actually, Greg just ran by the... Uh, Perfect, <coughs> perfectly timed ball, too. Well, he, ran, he just ran by the, the guy because he didn't bite on the... He didn't bite on the, on the pump fake. It was, you know, they were behind... We were behind by... At 16 points, and and uh, of course we go for two here and don't make it. Uh, and Tennessee starts a drive right here. Now they they this is one time that I think really showed the kind of mm -hmm. football team that they are. Is they just they just out muscled them. Auburn is down 10 now, 19 to nine. And that little back right there has got a lot of courage and does a good job for him. Thompson and big strong offensive line. This is where we get to roughing the kicker, uh, Tennessee and. Uh, that was David Rocker that got up inside there and got a hand on it, I guess, wasn't it? Right, right. That, uh, and I, I, you know, that was a, that was a... Hmm. It was close, Coach. It was close. Yeah. That was a tough game for officials to call last night and board that big old fullback right there. Just so after the... his way in the end zone. So right there, th this is where the, our football team, in my opinion, showed the kind of character that we got. We're down, you know... We're down now by 17. What, 17. With 14. Started off, started off right there with Herbert Case in a kickoff return team running it back out to the 45 yard line. It's amazing how much that. And, and uh, Stan comes back and, you know, he's just, as, I mean, he is beyond his freshman year as, a, as far as poise and confidence and <coughs> is concerned. It's, you know, it's one thing to have that ability, but there's Third something and else four. to have. The, and to have the courage, and, and he got, uh, he had a lot of time. There's Fred Baxter, and Fred made some big, big plays in the game last night. And Overcoming a penalty on this play. That's uh, hard hitting on Tennessee's part. Shane Watson gets on the fumble. Fourth and seven, it, you it, go for the field goal right, here. Right, we've got to have three scores anyway, uh, Phil, and we get down there, and we, they stop us, and we make it uh, 26 to 12, and I know two. Now we got to have two touchdowns to, to, you know, to win or tie the ball game. And uh, great coverage on the kickoff. There's that superhuman they got playing free safety for them that gets stopped at the 15-yard line. <laughs> <coughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you can see right there just a lot of people around the ball. There's David Rockland, Ricky Sutton, and Walter Tate. And Big play they, here on that's third right. down. That's right. Walter's running him out of bounds, and Larry Young was smart and pulling up and not hitting late. And we get it ball back about midfield or wherever and start right back. The fourth down, was that a fourth down play right yes. there? Yes, yes. Fourth down play to, to Herbert Casey. Herbert Casey made some key catches in the ball game there. Stan again. And a great job of throwing the football to to uh, Dale Overton standing there on the sideline. Third and seven right here. And uh, Stan just, I mean, he's like a seasoned veteran there throwing the ball to Griffith. Fourth right and there. goal coming right here. Well, this is a, a call that uh, Coach Blakeman, Coach Sullivan, and Callaway, and Coach Casey, and Coach Daniel make, and, and uh, we score with it. Fourth down, we come right back. That one's called back for moving. Fourth come, down, 13 now. <coughs> and we come right back and get it ball thrown to Dale Overton for the touchdown. Again, we get two in a row, so I guess, you know, theoretically we, <laughs> we won, I guess, but one of them was called back, so... <laughs> But anyway, now it's a, it's a one touchdown game. And uh, our defense is excited and offense is excited and all we want is football. And the crowd is excited. That's right, the crowd has gotten excited and you can see that, uh, you know, from a, from a defensive standpoint, there's Kelly and great play right there by Alex Thomas. And uh, the uh, fourth quarter now. Well, we've no, been in not, the fourth not quite. We've, we've yeah, been, been in the, the fourth, fourth quarter. quarter, Phil. Where you been? <laughs> now, I'm uh, confused, Coach. Greg Taylor catching the ball, running. Their safety runs him out of bounds. You look at that right there. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> That's uh, Herbert Casey, and that was a clutch play. I think that was a third down play or whatever and got us right there. But with four minutes and something to go in the game, and they, they stop us, and I know that we can kick the ball down in there close with defensively. We're going to hold them, and we're going to get the ball back, and it's exactly what we did. 4.50 to go. They go for the deep one right here, and I was glad to see that because it stopped the clock, and, and uh, we needed time at this point in time in the game. Third and six here. Big play Great by Great play Darryl. by Darrell Crawford. They run the screen, and, and Darrell gets out there and makes a play, and there's Nick Ramsey and whatever, and there's we coming they bring in a blitz stan does a great job and we do a great job of picking up the blitz stan gets rid of the ball and uh, to, to fred baxter who takes it down to the 20 yard line freshman to freshman there here's a, a good call on <coughs> the draw now here comes the big fourth down play well that's it was as big as they get and and greg taylor beats that great all uh, free safety for tennessee and i'm not so sure greg taylor is not the best receiver in our conference right now so Auburn scores the final 17 points to tie at 26-26. Auburn, Louisiana Tech next Saturday at 1.30. No TV. The Auburn Radio Network on the air at 12 noon. And there are a few tickets for the game. So get them this week. And we'll see you next week on the Auburn Football Review. Coach Dye's apparel provided by Brooks Brothers in the River Chase Galleria. <laughs> that I think that where we're missing the boat is is that nobody's stepping forward we're not getting we're not getting I'm not doing the job on Monday Tuesday and Wednesday in preparation up to the game to where you know uh, we don't have the mental lapses and the mental mistakes in the ball game that we had today that that you know that help you that help you defeat yourself and uh, and, and 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 it's not I'm gonna tell you what man you know I It'd be if I could if I could say the problems on offense. The problem ain't just on offense, man. The problem is on defense, and it's on offense and it's in the kicking game. It's all three areas. It's not just in one area. So uh, I'm gonna challenge you, and I'm gonna challenge our football, our coaches, and I'm gonna try to do a better job of coaching. But we need you know we need some something from your standpoint. You seen this. I mean, you got a chance to win four conference championships in a row, something that hadn't been done in, ever at this place, and only one other time in the history of the Southeastern Conference. So somewhere along the way, you got to be good enough to win like you won 
just based on character and the way you live and the way you're raised every day. And, and let's let this one be ours today. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, Auburn goes 83 yards in the final two minutes of the game to beat Louisiana Tech 16 to 14. Not what the doctor ordered for a guy who spent three days in the hospital last week, Coach. Well, I, I, regardless of where I was, I was happy to win yesterday. <laughs> and I, I, I'm happy for our players and our fans and everybody else. It wasn't a very pretty thing, and, but um, we did win it. And, uh, I got to give a lot of credit to Louisiana Tech, their coaching staff, and their players because they had an excellent plan and they played hard and and uh, did everything but win the football game. But uh, when it came down at the end, uh, we had enough poise and and uh, character to to take the ball and move the length of the field and get the field goal, get the opportunity for the field goal. And Jim Von Wild, as you know, he's been instrumental in our last two ball games kicked the field goal that won the ball game for us. And the, um, you know, you heard what I said er earlier in the, in the dressing room after the ball game. That's basically what uh, we just, we're just not playing real well. And um, we've been fortunate to win three football games. And in my opinion, we haven't played well in any of them. And uh, we tied Tennessee and, and uh, played, you know, half pretty good football. And uh, we're not, uh, we're not, we we in spurts. We're not. We don't have consistency in in in, uh, in any one area. I mean, it's in all all phases of our game, and uh, I think that we've just got to go back and and try to develop better practice habits and work habits on the field, and and develop better better habits out there and to carry over on Saturday. And and um, you know, it's uh, we need to take a close look at ourselves because we got some tough football games coming up and. If we don't, uh, if we don't improve drastically in the next couple of weeks, then you know we're going to be in for some tough days ahead. I think it could have been some of the emotion of Tennessee, and then concern about you that maybe. No, I don't think it was any concern about me. I, you know, I didn't expect us to be as high as we were for Tennessee. You know, our fans weren't, and we're going to kind of take on the same personality as our fans. But um, the, you know, I would expect us to be, you know. You don't you don't have to be as high emotional if you don't make mental mistakes and uh, yeah, but you know we we had to break down on the kicking game we got a punt blocked and we had missed assignments and dropped passes on of offenses and, and uh, you know they hurt us with a little old trap play running the football and you know they completed a few passes and you know but, you know if you went and looked at it as a whole we didn't play too bad defensively it was just a few breakdowns here and there that that. Uh, the pass they called for the touchdown was a routine play. It probably should have been intercepted, or, or you know, if we'd had coverage on the guy, we might have sacked him. Mm -hmm. So it's just uh, it's just a combination of a lot of things, uh, field and and uh, just like I said, we got you know we got to take a close look at uh, you know the what we're doing and 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 just try to maybe cut down on what we're doing and and do a few things better. All right, we'll return with the first half action in just a minute. Several high school bands on the field uh, at the uh, opening and quite a scene. Had a good crowd yesterday, Phil, you know, and uh, I have to say it was, I don't know, what was the official crowd? 72,000. Bo and uh, Nicholas and Garrett. And Bo came in Thursday and will be a couple of days before he goes to Los Angeles to start his season. <clears throat> it doesn't take us long to get in trouble. We we don't make a first down the first time we have the ball, and, and uh, first time we line up and punt, Louisiana Tech blocks it. So there's a drop pass right here that would have been an easy first down. And, uh, Running on third and three here and just a yard short. Three, just you know, just just a game, just a game of inches, and you got to make them. And I mean that's the difference between winning and losing. I don't know, the breakdown came up the middle somewhere there and they just, uh, they just... Their second play. <coughs> and it's 7 nothing. That's a little trap play that they used and, and uh, Hunt was yesterday with it and uh, they had offset that back and hadn't run him a lot when he was offset, but they ran him yesterday. 
good running back to both of those kids for losing. I think that's Richardson. And this is Davis. That's a kid who rushed for 300 yards against Southwest Louisiana last week, and both of them are good players. Now their second possession, they're down at the 14-yard line now. Fine play right here by John Wiley. Breaks up what could have been a touchdown. And uh, Second and 10 from you know, the 14. And Fernando Horn and uh, Dale Crawford and Larry Young make a nice play there. Mike Kimmel blo blocks a field goal here in just a second. Uh, good play by Corey Barlow. So they're going for the 32-yarder here. Watch Campbell get up high. Now Mike Campbell has got the highest vertical jump on our football team, and, and uh, he's, we've blocked two coming up the middle this year. And <coughs> Second quarter now, the touchdown drive starts down deep. That's a great play right there by Stan White to get, uh, get away from the rush and, and get the ball off and get it completed. Comes back and makes, makes a nice throw and catch to Greg Taylor. Stan had another outstanding day yesterday. It's marvelous. He's been in the world of trouble without the way he's playing. Fine play to, to Herbert Casey and he had some big Herbert catches. Make some, make some big plays. I, overall, I think our receivers are catching the football. Well, uh, Shane Washington. 17 yard play. And good, good hole and almost nice a big play. Down at the 20 now on first down. Electrons running ran well yesterday, and, and James ran pretty good yesterday. It just uh, here's a touchdown run, it's a fine play. Had over 400 yards of offense. <coughs> just didn't seem like it. Did. Well, if you know, if we score those two touchdowns when we get down there, it's 28 to mm -hmm. or oh, what a 31 to 14 ball game, and it's respectable. But you did, we didn't score them, we had to settle for field goals. 7.51 left in the half. This is kind of typical right here where we, you know, we get him bunched up and don't wrap up and he just breaks out of there and Corey uh, Lewis makes a, makes a play after he breaks containment on that side. It's good pressure. Walter Tate probably played his best game of the year yesterday and, and uh, it couldn't have come at a better time. He made some big, big plays, made some big plays in that uh, fourth quarter when we had to get the ball back. Their punter had a great day, average 45 yards. Pins all been back. He here. hadn't kicked that well coming into our ball game, but he certainly had a great day yesterday. 357 left in the half, and they get something going just before the half. There's a great lick by John Wiley. <coughs> On Slaughter, that little receiver, and he's a he's a great player. There's Walter Tate right there. Throw in the middle. We had a, a bad blow yesterday. Lost Lamar Rogers for the year with a knee injury, and that's going to hurt us in our defensive line. Lamar is one of our better players, and they've been playing well. And they missed a the field goal here up before the half. We just don't have much enthusiasm, and it's just. Uh, Kind of like a Sunday afternoon stroll, and it's uh, the crowd doesn't have much enthusiasm. It's, it's well, it goes back and forth, but uh, you know, if uh, we can't count on the crowd every week, <laughs> bring uh, tags, and we need to remind the folks about renewing their Auburn tags. Absolutely, that's uh, probably the easiest way, and the. <coughs> The best way you can help academics here at Auburn is where everybody can participate in a uh, license to learn and buying your Auburn tag with Sanford Towers on it and display the fact that you're an Auburn person. And of course you get them at your probate office and uh, the $50, uh, all but a couple of dollars of that goes directly to the Auburn Academic Scholarship Fund. So uh, take care of that for us this week and uh, have your tag when you go see the Tigers play. Uh, next Saturday at home. We'll be back to take a look at the second half. To have played professional baseball, but it all comes back to Auburn University. The background, uh, the education that I got, uh, and, and it seems like everybody around has heard of Auburn University, uh, knowing that 
while I was playing baseball throughout and, and traveling, I would always hear War Eagle. A 7-7 game <laughs> starting the second half. We moved the ball pretty well the second half, uh, Bill and, and uh, as James making a nice run on, I think, second and six or whatever. And right. <coughs> we haven't, you know, we, we, we haven't been consistent with the running game, and, and uh, I just, I know in this league that, that you absolutely just can't win a championship unless you can run the football, and <coughs> watched LSU in Florida play last night, and that guy right there is throwing plenty, plenty good enough to us to win a championship if we can just get our running game and get some guts in it. That was a third down play there. <laughs> We won't have any limitations. Right now we got limitations. <laughs> that uh, nice throw and catch and gets us down back down. We had lost some yardage there and uh, get it back down and kick a field goal and go up 10 to 7. And and uh, it was a nice drive right after the half. We kicked off to them, held them, and got the ball and drove it straight down and kicked the field goal. Didn't get it in the end zone, though. Had a mistake down there that kept us out of the end zone. And <coughs> Here comes the third and eighth play for them. The. Uh, Big play right here, uh, sack and part of John Wilson and pressure from, from Reggie Barlow and we get the ball back and third and nine right here. Nice throw and catch to James Joseph and uh, picks up the first down. 13 yard gain on first down at the 43. Darrell Williams makes a couple of nice runs on this drive, and we get it down to the five, and again, have to settle for a field goal. A couple of running plays, and it's third down and four right here. Well, we, you know, we, we just kind of you get in that situation. It's tough to throw it in there, and you kind of gamble, and sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't. And, but we kick a field goal and now it's 13 to seven and <coughs> I'm concerned at this time right here during the ball game, even though we'd moved the ball well, we hadn't scored. And I knew that this offense they had was capable of scoring points and that's a good defense by uh, Jason Merchant and uh, Darrell Crawford and David Rocker and there's another fine play by Fernando Horn. <coughs> they hold him in the third quarter, and then Auburn drives early in the fourth, but misses the field goal, and now they have their opportunity. Well, we get down, and, and you know, again, we stop ourselves and just not executing. And this is a critical play right there. That was third and 17, did you say? Right, third and 17. And they come up with the, with the yardage right to keep the drive alive. And <coughs> again, they are, they are, they're a balanced offensive football team. They run it. Uh, they gained 500 yards a game. I okay, well, second. This is a touchdown pass right there, and it's just full coverage on our part. 5.50 right left now, in the right game. Now, dead serious in this football game because we make a little drive and take it out to midfield and, and then have to give it up. Here comes the sack. A big sack right here. It's a... Uh, Eric Shaw, that uh, a lot of you remember, that committed to us and signed with Florida State and, and got in trouble and got himself straightened out and now he's at Louisiana Tech and coach said he's doing well and I'm the happiest guy in the world for him. Got to hold him here. Fine play by Walter Tate, Fernando Horn, David Rocker. Third and six, they get four. So they have to punt. They have to give us the ball back. And, I mean, you, you know, right here, you know, we are trying. 202 at the 13 yard. <coughs> Fine throw and kick to Greg Taylor. Well, that was a and, uh, big play. It's critical, kind of critical. Third and five right here. And uh, you know, that guy right there has got the pause of a, of a veteran, hits Pedro Cherry and uh, gets it out of bounds. Here comes stop, third and 10. Stopping the clock, and here's a great throw and catch. Good protection. Well, we got good protection for the most part yesterday, and Greg Taylor comes up with the ball and has about got it in field goal range now. Another short pass or two. Gets it out to Herbert Casey. Auburn has used all its timeouts now. And uh, 
We make one little, one more little throw here. Excuse me, one timeout, Renee. And then Stan White centers it up. Right here, he gets the ball right in front of the goal post. Goes down, we call timeout with seven seconds left. And up to have good protection, good snap, good hold, good kick. We win the game. Callaway, yeah. Dickinson, and <coughs> Buck Wild. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't a very emotional game. It, it, was, uh, it, it was not even a very emotional win, but it was a win. And uh, I told the squad yesterday after the, after the game, uh, Phil, that somewhere during the course of the season, you got to win one of those games against somebody that uh, you expected to beat pretty handily. You're, gonna, you're not going to be ready to play, and they're going to be at a, at, a, at a peak emotionally and mentally for the game. And, and uh, when, when you measure the balance of two out, the guy that's supposed to be up here, and if his emotions are down here and the guy that's down here and his emotions are up here, it evens out. And, and uh, you got to win those games. And, and it's got to, you win those games based on the, the, your character and your football team and the way you live every day. And, and that's what happened yesterday, and we were very fortunate. We'll be back in just a minute. Back in the conference with Vanderbilt, Saturday, Jordan Hare, 1.30. Tickets available for the game, Auburn Radio at 12 noon. We'll see you there. Thank you, Coach. See you next week. Coach Dye's apparel provided by Brooks Brothers in the River Chase Galleria, Birmingham. Right here, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Get Coach Daniels to do it. Coach Daniels. Yeah. 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 One, two, three. One, two, three. It's hard to uh, tell exactly how, mu how much ground we made up this week. But I know that you made tremendous strides in the right direction. I mean, I could feel it. You could feel it. And uh, today we made things happen on offense. We made things happen in the kicking game. And, and we made things happen on defense. So that's, that's being a complete football team, and that's everybody contributing. And, and as a result of it, um, you know, it was, a, it was a convincing win for you, one, I mean, which it should have been. And uh, <coughs> we want to take it and use it and, and, uh, and, and learn from it. But the big thing is, is men, let's be a better football team next week. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by your local Coca-Cola bottler. Coke, you can't beat the feeling. Colonial Bank, where we make good things happen for our customers every day. Osmos Pressure Treated Pine, only from Great Southern Wood. If it doesn't say Osmos on a little yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Golden Flake Snack Food. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. Alpha Insurance. Call Alpha. Put your trust in people who care. Ziegler, since 1927. Get the taste that's seasoned to please. Pick Ziegler. All Pro Auto Parts, the professional's choice. Your Alabama John Deere Network, nothing runs like a deer. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the caring company. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday at Jordan-Hare Stadium, the resurgent Tigers with Vanderbilt, 56-6, to and I would imagine the coach smiled. Well, I did, and it was, uh, it was, I think it was long overdue. Uh, our football team was a different team yesterday, and I know that the score, uh, in, my, in my opinion, really doesn't indicate what actually took place uh, during the course of the week and during the course of the game. Uh, you know, Vanderbilt struggling, we all realized that. It would have probably been a lot easier if we'd have gone out with a kind of a 
laid back attitude, but that wasn't the way we approached it, and that wasn't what we, that wasn't the results we got. Uh, the, the coaches and the players worked extremely hard last week. We we made a lot of uh, effort in trying to come together as a football team, and and our seniors stepped forward, and and uh, the young people that played in the game, you're going to see them make a lot of plays yesterday. And that's the thing that I've been waiting for is for the young ones to come on because there's some talent there and some ability there, and we're five games into the season now, and, you know, they they shouldn't be playing like rookies anymore. And the specialty teams were <coughs> really evident. Yesterday. Right. The, the uh, you know, they, we got a punt block for a touchdown, a punt return for a touchdown, and a fumble at the 7-yard line. So it was... Uh, it was a team effort, and that was one of the things that we wanted to do is that we wanted to play offense regardless of who was on the field. Let's go to the dressing room now and get some comments first from Larry Young, who had the blocked punt and the touchdown. I had a return call, then, and all during the game, the, the end guy was blocking out, and he wasn't blocking me, so I just said to myself, well, I'm going to go for it this time. If he blocked me, he blocked me, and he didn't, and I was wide open. You, you knew which way the ball went because you went to it. Oh, yeah. I felt it and seen it roll in the end zone. I was worried it was going to roll out the end zone, and I was running as <laughs> fast as I could to get to it, and I would have been upset if it would have went out. I pulled my hamstring Wednesday. I didn't know how I was going to was gonna uh, work for me today, but it worked good. And uh, did a lot of confidence for me, I know, from coach standpoint, and hopefully I'll be ready to be strong next week against Florida State. We didn't get the situation that we wanted, you know, by them challenging you know, us, making a tough game, but, you know, we still we learned a lot from this game, and we can get better. I think it all started in practice uh, this week. Everybody it seemed like everybody had a different attitude and uh, uh, had a lot of leadership out there and uh, it, it carried, carried over to Saturday. I think it started Monday. Coach Dice talked to us and uh, that night the senior players got together. We had a meeting and talked about what was going on and carried over into practice and I think it was evident we did improve a lot this week. I could tell there's a big change in practice from Monday through Thursday and uh, you know I, I kind of figured in my mind that it, you know it was going to be a lot different game. It was all about production. It wasn't going to be a situation of, of talk. It was strictly production and that's something that we went into Tuesday's practice with. We're just going back to the basics and playing the way Auburn playing. That's that's being aggressive and productive. Y'all looked excited out there today. Yeah I mean we, you know people been down on us you know the, the media and all this stuff saying we're not enough in the top five team and stuff so you know we have to prove a lot to ourselves first and you know hopefully everything came you know in the part of that. The seniors got together and we decided you know we're just going to change our attitudes and uh, you know just go out and have fun every day and you know just be leaders and uh, you know we was hoping the younger guys would catch on and follow us and you know I think it was evident out there today that you know that did happen. Where do the pros go when they need auto parts? They go where I go to all pro. Beautiful day yesterday wasn't it? It was uh, you know about, I guess about 80 degrees 75 80 degrees and just a little breeze stirring and Prettiest stadium in America, Coach. <coughs> I was uh, I was excited about watching our football team play, and uh, I think the players were excited about playing. And they made something happen early. And they too. did. It didn't take long, and you know they. Uh, I noticed Watson said that that kid said he had his son in his eyes. Pedro told me he he got the sun in his eyes on that end of the field one time mm -hmm. too. That mm -hmm. yesterday. It happened to the guy twice. You're right. <coughs> We run this one right in with James Joseph and behind the offensive line coming off the football and uh, James and, and uh, Tony Richardson and Chris Gray and Rob Selby and Ed King, Tim Tillman, Anthony Redmond. That's Jess Simpson and then and, uh, Chris Gray and Rob Selby really came off the football and, and uh, Fred Baxter at the wing set over there. And, Big crease and got it in. And there's a guy that excited me yesterday as much as anybody on the field. James Willis made a lot of plays and was excited about playing. And here he is again right here. You can make another play. And James has got tremendous talent. He's been hurt with a with a pull groin. And uh, Vanderbilt took that drive and went right down and kicked the field goal. And, Aided by a 15-yard penalty. Um, Vanderbilt's got a pretty good, little strong line of scrimmage. And they got their quarterback hurt yesterday. And already had their starter hurt and so they ended up playing with their third quarterback which certainly didn't help them and there's the uh, stand throwing to Shane Washington comes back and hits Pedro Cherry right on the sideline and he tipped those out of bounds and got good protection yesterday 
It was good to see Stacy Danley back out there running and cutting and slashing and <coughs> here he goes again on second and uh, four gets six on this play. Did something yesterday I've been wanting to do all year long. We played all four of our tailbacks, James Joseph and Stacy Danley and uh, Electron and, and uh, Alex Smith throwing here to, to that was a blitz and uh, fan check to the to the pass, run the option on the goal line, and James Joseph walks in. I know that option shocked them. <laughs> the, uh, but uh, we got to play all of our running backs, and as Fernando Horn and Carrick and Cunningham and Dennis Wallace and uh, Mike Campbell and Darrell Crawford. Jason Merchant down Jason, under there? Jason Merchant, and uh, uh, really excited about having an opportunity. There's uh, Adrian Jackson slapping that ball down, really excited about having an opportunity to play Jason Merchant and, and uh, Adrian Jackson. They, they, they worked hard, and Adrian is probably healthy for the first time. And as a key third down play right there, we hit uh, Greg Taylor, and there again, a good blocking behind the offensive line, Jeff Petullo, and and uh, Ernest Wallace and, and uh, Craig Thompson and Wayne Gandy. It's Ed King has, has played extremely well all year long and it's a nice throw and catch and uh, just a deep corner route and Dan puts it there perfectly and that little guy can catch it and the tickle me just he jumped up in the arms of one of those big old offensive linemen right there and he just <laughs> like a <laughs> he like a little doll. <laughs> As John Wilson, John looked like he played good yesterday. And Walter Tate, and pressure, pressure, pressure. Look at Walter. I saw Walter make he play 20 yards downfield yesterday, and for a guy that weighs 315 pounds, just to hustle and going to the football. There's Ricky, Ricky Sutton, and, and big play right here by by uh, David Rocker. They've gotten a over there there's Larry Young that blocked the punt and they're down close scored the touchdown that was Walter Tate again right in the quarterback's face and good coverage by John Wiley and, and Eric Ramsey pressure again <coughs> the uh, it's amazing how inefficient the passing game is when you got somebody right in right in your face <laughs> The first quarter is 21 to 6, and, and uh, they're having fun playing. James Joseph running the sweep, making somebody miss. Pedro Cherry downfield blocking in front of him. Wayne Gandy and Tony Richardson. Second and six at the 50. <coughs> As Electron block, block, good, behind good blocking on the right side of the line with, with uh, Selby and Jeff Simpson. And Another Auburn turnover. They're going the other way. Yeah, we threw an a couple of interceptions yesterday. There's David Rocker again, and David looked like he made a lot of plays. And, and uh, uh, Richard Shea right in the middle. There's Anthony Judge. And this is the one right here. We run back for the touchdown. I guess uh, went 70, 74 yards. Good block right there. James Willis just really threw a great block. And, Chain cut back across the grain and took it in the corner of the end zone, and, and we really needed that to happen. You won't be able to see it right here. That was smart pulling up on one, not clipping. But uh, you got a host of people and made the cut at just the right time. That's a long run. It's a long run. I guess he probably ran over 100 yards <laughs> when he crisscrossed right. back across the field. <coughs> Their next possession. Fine play by Darrell Crawford and, and uh, Ricky Sutton. Ricky contained him, and, and uh, Darrell Crawford made the hit on it. As uh, Carrick and Cunningham sacking the quarterback. Here comes the block now. You can see right here the end blocked out or stepped out, and, and Larry Young came right in inside of him. We had to return on. And he goes in and recovers for the touchdown. And, and uh, I'm excited for Larry. And Larry's had a little bit of a swollen knee. And is coming off a knee surgery from last year. And, and uh, it didn't look like he had much wrong with his knee then. There's Anthony Judge. And 
John Wilson right in the middle of it. This is James Willis knocked his hat off. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we coming right back now on the just we run the sweep, the counter sweep, the sweep, the counter sweep, and isolation, and, and uh, coming off the football, just playing football, just sound, basic, fundamental football. Then, then uh, Greg made this up on the field. He felt like he could beat him in the seam, and, and Greg beat him, and Stan got the football to him. That's so important when the wideouts and the tell the quarterback. Well, those two right there have got great chemistry between them, I can assure you that. He should be leading the conference in receptions <coughs> and touchdowns now. <coughs> and it's 42 to 6 at the half. We'll be back in just a moment. And my cough is back. <laughs> I'm very tough. Uh. This team was honored yesterday at the uh, game uh, as voted by the readers of the Birmingham Post-Herald. Coach, uh, you'll see some familiar faces here. Well, I'll tell you, there's, there's a special bunch of people. Uh, Benji Rowland and David Jordan and Lewis Colbert and Donnie Humphrey and Reggie Slack and, and uh, Lawyer Tillman. Lawyer's got a broken foot, I guess, and there's Lewis Colbert and there's Big Donnie. There's well, other parties, Lawrence, Reggie. Yeah. As lawyer. A lot and of those guys are playing pro ball, about 13 or 14 of them, and many of the others. Well, I'll tell you, there's, there's been some tremendous individuals that have been through our program in the last 10 years, and we got some great ones in it now. So um, it's been a lot of fun for me in the relationship that I've I bet. I bet it's got with those guys. And it gets stronger when they leave. I mean, you know, they come in and play, and, but um, the things that. Uh, we have a lot of fun together now. Yeah. Don't forget uh, Midnight Madness. The Auburn basketball team <coughs> ends uh, practice as quickly as they possibly can. At midnight tonight, the doors of the Coliseum open at 1030. There'll be a media game at 11 o'clock and then practice uh, as soon as the midnight hour. Uh, I mean, as soon as midnight passes so that they can legally begin practice. And there'll be uh, free T-shirts and uh, pizza. And if you can do without the sleep, it ought to be fun tonight at the Auburn Coliseum. We'll be back in just a minute. Well, it's really hard to describe how special Auburn really is to somebody that hasn't been there or hasn't gone to school there for a, a, a period of time. When I was there, it just the people were very friendly, and that's easy to say about a lot of campuses, but it seemed like it was heartfelt, and uh, that's really tough to find nowadays. And like I said, when I people when I go to different stadiums, people always yell War Eagle, and they always make it a point to say something that they went to Auburn or they know somebody that went to Auburn. That's just the way Auburn is. It's a very score big with 55 series, 105 to 200 horsepower John Deere tractors to kick off the deal. Macintosh. Well, we we uh, I guess we he played the last series of the first half too, and and because uh, we get a great return right here by Herbert Casey. <coughs> Herbert is really playing well, and you know, uh, he and Pedro Cherry and uh, Dale Overton, our wide receivers, are just a dang good group of young kids. And as uh, Frank throwing to his roommate Shane Washington, and Shane had that big play yesterday, and he uh, comes back and hits Greg Taylor, and I take Greg out here. I, I said, Greg, you had enough, and Mr. <laughs> 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 Going the other way now. Yeah, Darrell Crawford and Ricky Sutton and, and a nine on the day. I'm not sure who that was. Uh, that was good pressure by, by James Willis. They, uh, it was Rocker. I guess it might have been uh, Reggie Barlow. As Frank throwing to, to Herbert again. Uh, Reed McMillan played yesterday and Reed's ready to play. There he is making a good block. And uh, Stacy Danley running and Wayne Gandy out front, Greg Greg uh, Thompson at center, and Shane Kiesel at guard, and Bert Lively played yesterday, and uh, just it was just uh, got an opportunity, like I said, to play a lot of people. It was great play and run, and just uh, just like I said, that guy's ready to explode, and and uh, I'm just a tickle for him. I don't know what to do, and he's uh, has. Uh, John Stewart, <coughs> good block on the corner, and Stacy takes it to the one-yard line. 
This is an 11 play, 89 yard drive, about to That's good. Look at that offensive line coming off football, and and uh, Fred Baxter. I just he had two or three. That's Tony Richardson that scored a couple of touchdowns yesterday. Big freshman fullback from Davil. And David Rock and David had a lot of big plays, and uh, Richard Shea and John Wilson. And here's a nice play by Adrian. And I was thinking there's one that's uh, Anthony Judge that uh, batted that one down. Adrian Jackson makes a nice play on the tip ball, and we have the block on, and they shank that one off the side. And <coughs> Dale Olsen scoops it up and runs it back six, eight yards, and, and uh, we in business again. At the 32-yard line. As Frank threw into Tony Russell, and Tony's the, the, the coming in at... Uh, his wide receiver also is just it's good to get him an opportunity to play as Alex Smith running and behind Jeff Catullo and he's fixing to score his first in season <laughs> touchdown right here. Chris Gray and uh, Alex Smith takes it in for the touchdown as Anthony Redman and again Shane Keesler and coming on and having a little fun playing the game. Frank had uh, did a good job yesterday. I think he was t 10 or 11 out of 14. And mm -hmm. as uh, uh, Donnegan Castleberry. <coughs> Fourth quarter now. We'll show you defensive plays for the rest of the game. As, uh, good pressure and the ball batted down by James Willis. As Frankie Stan Kunis and Alex Thomas playing in the secondary and along with. Mike Pena and with Harry Krams and there's John Wilson on the sack. He and David Rocker. Got good pressure on that quarterback all day long yesterday. Here comes Richard Shea right down the middle, a little twist stunt. And Richard and and uh, Reggie Barlow and like I said, we got a lot of pressure on that quarterback and Watson Brown is a fine, fine person. We and coached for me at East Carolina, my first coaching job and Got a lot of young football players, and, you know, they're kind of struggling now. And we'll be back with some final comments in just a minute. Good lumber can withstand almost anything, like this fence. Built with Osmo's pressure-treated pine from great southern wood. The lumber with a 40-year guarantee. Coach, the goals are still out there, and uh, Florida State presents a great opportunity. Well, it does, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm excited about our football team uh, more so now than at any point in time this year. We need our people back again this week. Like we had them for Tennessee and Makes Alabama last year. They've been kind of... Made a difference in Knoxville last year. Yeah, they, they kind of been a little laid back the last couple of weeks. But uh, <laughs> we, need, uh, we need that home field advantage, and you can certainly give it to us. So we're looking forward to playing Florida State there. A great football team. It's uh, got, I think, more speed than any football team in the country. and. Okay. A lot of great athletes. 637 kickoff and the Auburn Network on at uh, 5 o'clock. We'll see you next week. Coach Dye's apparel provided by Brooks Brothers in the River Chase Galleria, Birmingham. Exactly what I asked you to do at the halftime. You know, you had a lot of chances. Things go against you out there. We throw the Broncos. They get the interception defense. 
was magnificent in the second half. Oh, yeah. Thank yes, you. Know, I mean, I mean absolutely. Hey, listen. But sometimes, that's, I mean, you got to find a way to win. Did we talk about finding a way to win? We did. We did. We did. Who's that got the sack at the end? At the... Ricky. Hey, come here. Come here, Ricky. Come here, Ricky. Hey. Hey. hey, let me. How many times have I told you you can make them kind of plays? Huh? A lot. It's all that does is decide who wins and who loses. Yeah. Yeah. You can't ever go back and not do it again. Okay. All right. From a selfish standpoint, there's no way for me to describe what this football game means to me personally. And, uh, you know, I want to thank you for that. And our coaching staff, we've taken a lot of abuse the last three, three years just like you have. And uh, it's, uh, it's a mighty satisfying win. Now, what you did tonight, man, you, you set the... You know, you set the stage for you to do what you want to do. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by your local Coca-Cola bottle. Welcome. <laughs> the comeback kids were on the warpath again last night. Down 17 to 7, Auburn comes back to beat Florida State 2017, Coach. Well, it, uh, you know, wasn't too pretty. <laughs> but, uh, wasn't a it, didn't take any, it didn't take anything away from the fact that it was a great win for the team and our fans and coaches and everybody loves Auburn University. It, uh, I think, uh, I think, the scene in the dressing room there with Coach Heron when he came in, because Coach Heron played at Florida State on some great football teams down there. And, and he's a fiery guy. Uh, and he is <laughs> one of the great uh, coaches in the country. And I think that I think that he displayed what all of us felt <laughs> <laughs> about as good as anybody could. It, uh, but it was a big win. And, and, you know, everybody contributed last night to the offense, the defense, the kicking game. And... Uh, it, it, we did, we really didn't. I think I, I think Florida. In fact, I know Florida State had a lot to do with it. Uh, feel that they had an excellent plan for us. They had an extra week to get ready for us. And and uh, frankly, I thought they played. I really thought they played a lot better than they had in some of uh, the games I'd seen them in. And and um, but uh, the well and that little quarterback kind of got us out of sync. He made some big plays, pulling the ball down and yeah, scrambling. Exactly. And hurt us some, but our defense came back a second half and shut them out, and uh, we kept scratching on offense, and finally got uh, what a couple of field goals and a, and a touchdown, and was enough to win. And but it was, uh, I think the the thing that stands out in, in the in the win, and of course we've had several of them like that this year, is the, is the character of this football team and and uh, the fact that they are not going to give up and and. Uh, uh, Phil, we're playing, a, we're playing a lot of young people and a lot of people that haven't played a great deal and and uh, we're still a long way from being as good as we can be, in my opinion. In fact, I think we'll have to get better to win out, but uh, we're, we're mighty happy to be where we are right now and, and uh, again, it was a big win for us. Let's go in the dressing room now and talk to some happy folks. Did a tremendous job. He went inside without any regard for his body and caught the football. That's, that's what we've got to do, especially in that situation. The one that uh, before the, the fourth and eighth, the one before then, was really, you had to really lay out to get that one. Well, I think uh, Stan, uh, he was looking at me all the whole while going across the middle of the field, and, you know, I just laid out for the ball. It took that blast play away from him. That right, and a little draw up the middle, and then played the screen that they had for a long touchdown. And the guard of Ruski. Well, you know, big, big wall. Walker, he falls on a ball as hard as he might have tripped and fell. Uh, he's probably got some excuse down there why he found it. He's been telling me all year long that he just hoped somebody ran it against him. <laughs> and he did it. He got it. Did you sense that uh, the guard Aruski was coming? No. Uh, I kind of looked at the lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of looked at the quarterback and I ain't seen him with the ball. And I just figured it was on the ground since the center wheel laying face down. And I kind of dived over and picked it up. <laughs> laying there for somebody to get it. Yeah, and I was the one. I was the guard. <laughs> you, were, you were the guard, Ruth. Yeah. 
<laughs> like that last play, I went in the huddle, and I said, look, get open, and I'll try to get it there as best I can. And, and Herbert gave me, he, he, his route was precise. He gave me a lot of room to throw over the linebacker and under the safety. And, you know, he made a spectacular catch on it. And, uh, and you know, we just got it in, and Jim saved us again. It was close, but it, as I looked up, it was it was in by enough. You know, I I knew I hit I knew I hit it well, and uh, I think it was in pretty by a pretty good bit before it started tailing off. Snaps were uh, snaps right on the money. Basically, yes, the last one, the one before that that tied it up. Basically, uh, kind of wobbly, but Chris is a good good holder. I gave him the credit for getting it down. Y'all have learned a lot this year and how to come back. <laughs> most definitely, game. most definitely. Um, I don't know. It's just a trademark of this team. Uh, I don't care how much we're down. We always found some kind of way to come back and you know make the game close or win the game. As you've seen yeah. the past games on. Well, you guys going to wherever you're going now. I mean, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> that depth began to tell late. They started slowly yeah. started to get into it. And our um, defense line started putting a little bit more pressure on the quarterback. And the receivers started getting open more. And uh, their defense line wasn't putting pressure on Stan. And Stan was hitting the guys. It was, it's a great game. It was. Uh, I, have you ever been in a better one? I don't know. <laughs> <play. laughs> By Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fans to come with their game faces on. I believe they did. There's no question about it, and they played an important part in that football game last night. You know, they just, they never let uh, Florida State fans get into the ball game, that's for sure. And, uh, so it's a, I'd stayed. say that was a total effort last <laughs> night on the part of all the fans and the players. And they didn't want to leave the stadium either. Yeah, we probably had a lot of Auburn folks praying at home, too. <laughs> You know, we did some good things last night, and then uh, we broke down some. And third and two here. But, but uh, we've got great, great athletes and great speed. There's Corey Barlow and making tackle on Bennett, their fine fullback. There's a great interception uh, by Darrell Crawford. That, uh, we had one miscue last night when we had a got a fail to come out on a punt situation. <coughs> Here comes uh, Auburn scoring drive. Well, we take this one, and this is the way I expected the football game to go right here, but it didn't turn out that way. We, we, we moved the ball well for down the field. And <coughs> I watched the punt. Nell's punt will be dropped. Richard did, a, did an outstanding job of kicking the football last night, and that's what happened when you got everybody, you know, playing at the... At the, at the Top of the game, Alvin Nash comes up with the turnover and, and a lot of people going for it, and Alvin came up with it. Stacy makes some tough yards right here. Just watch this effort right here. Keeps on running, keeps on moving. And <coughs> Second and three. Tony Richardson gets outside. <coughs> Things are just getting better and better. First and goal at the five. An offensive line knocked him back off the ball there and the fine block by Fred Baxter. And he just seals him off in there. They look like Gandy and, and uh, Ed King and it was either Victor, Victor Hall or Chris Gray at tight end. And the quarterback does a great job of faking and misdirection stuff. And, and our defense is getting around the football. We had some big plays right here where they came close to making first downs and didn't quite make them. We're in the second quarter now. Florida State with the ball. <coughs> this is their field goal drive. Uh -huh. And that's Ampley, and he is hard to tackle. Great speed, great quickness. This is a <coughs> <coughs> almost interception right here by Eric Rand. They had great coverage. This is the thing that I was talking about, uh, Weldon right here, picking up a key first down for him, and he's just more elusive than Johnson was, and, and uh, kind of threw our rhythm off defensively. They run a reverse. Corey Barlow does an excellent job of playing the thing, and we have good pursuit and effort getting over it. Hold the game to a minimum, and they got it first and goal at the five. Did a good job of covering the play action pass. They tried a couple more times. Third and five here. <coughs> and have to settle for a field goal, which was big, big, big in the ball game. 
They dominate the remainder of the second quarter and lead 17-7 at we, the half. We we'll just cut get, that out, Coach. We couldn't get anything going offensively, and they moved the football up and down the field in the second quarter. The people. Items, there's a possibility that the Mississippi State game at Starkville next Saturday will be offered in Alabama on a pay-for-view uh, pay basis. You need to check with your local cable company and watch the news media early next week. And the decade of the 80s videos are now being mailed. You should have yours soon if you've ordered. And if, if you haven't, here's the address. Decade video, P.O. Box 351, Auburn, Alabama, 36831035129.95 plus $5 postage. We'll return for the exciting second half in just a minute. We'll pick up the action now midway of the third quarter, Auburn's second possession. Well, we possession. came out, the big thing is we came out and we played outstanding on defense and Florida State couldn't get anything going. Electron came in in the second half and gave us some, several big runs and and, uh, and played an important role in the second half. And there's Turner Richardson again making the first down in key situation. Another thing about this half, Coach, they didn't let the adversity <coughs> stop them, you know? No, and, and, you know, Stan didn't have his best night last night for sure, and, and it, uh, but it'll be a great learning experience for him. He's got to go through those times, and, and uh, there's Walter Tate making a big play, and Adrian Jackson, and... <coughs> this is a key possession right here, right, this goal is line. Larry Young and, and Darrell Crawford and David Rocker and... When those defensive linemen are showing out there on those screen plays, you know they're hustling to the football. They're, they came up a little short here, and we stop them, and that's big when you can stop them backed up like that. And you know you're going get, to get the ball in good field position. <coughs> These little... This is Herbert Casey, uh, Shane Washington, of course, got knocked out in the ball game, and, and Herbert uh, returned punch for us after Shane went down. Those, uh, Shane made two or three... 10, 12 yard runs, and that was another one. This fine play right here. Great block by Greg Taylor and and uh, Chris Gray and, and Rob Seb and people on the right side of the line. You can see them all get hooked there. See it again here. As Greg Greg Taylor knocking his guy down, there's Dale Overton screening his guy off downfield. And Darrell makes about a 15 yard run. <coughs> Key play right here, third and five. Run the option and and uh, Dan pitches it to to Electron and we they stop us and we kick the field goal and make it a 17 to 10 ball game. 37 yarder, 17 to 10. We go now <coughs> to the fourth quarter. And that's big because that uh, the strategy in the game changes and it affects the way they call plays and the way we call plays. A fine play by Eric Ramsey. <coughs> Looks like our secondary made a lot of plays, a lot of tackles. Great play right here by Corey Barlow on that fine tailback. This drive aided by a pass interference call. Right. We. Uh, this is a great effort on the part of Walter Tate right there. An outstanding play by Dennis Wallace. Of course, Dawsey is a, from Dothan, Alabama, is a great player. I don't know how many caught eight or ten passes last night, but a great player is one that we got tremendous respect for. There's Coach the Hall, Coach Hall and in the press box calling the defenses and 13 minutes to go now <coughs> Greg Taylor and uh, the uh, Florida State had had did a great job for is a fine play and run on the part of James Joseph we got a little something going here and we turn it over give it back to him but again I think I think that shows the character of this football team is that, that uh, you know when they had something go against them that they just hung in there and kept playing hard. And <coughs> normally, if you do that, to somewhere along the way, the breaks are going to change. While Anthony Anthony Judge is getting pressure to him, he doesn't have all day to throw the football. And they're just hitting Dossy again on a short game. <coughs> this is a three. great great play right here. All he had to do was get to that stripe right there and he's got a first down and Corey Barlow and the linebackers and the rest of the folks in the secondary kept him from getting there. Gave us the ball back. They punted and and uh, we throw a little trick play right here. Didn't work. <coughs> <coughs> they 
They intercepted the tackle by Pedro Sherry and Stacy Dana. Eight minutes left in the game now. Stan took some pretty good shots in that ball game last night. Third down <coughs> coming. Here comes the uh, <coughs> Gardaruski. Walter Tate just goes in there and gets that football. They run a gadget play, and, and the gadget worked for us. Thank goodness. Gave us the ball out in midfield. And uh, that was a big, big play in the football game. A little over six minutes to go at that point. We get the ball, and, and uh, now we got to get... There's a great play right there. It was a third and 15. That one went 17. Second and 15. Second and 15. This is the key play in the drive right here where they get a 15-yard penalty for from Bell Overton out of bounds. Stacey Danny makes a nice little run. Third and one right here. Yeah. <clears throat> Great run by Tony Richardson. He runs over a guy there, runs over one there, and gets the ball down to around the two, two and a half yard line. Stacey Danny takes it in from there. It, it was great blocking by Ed King and Wayne Gandy and Bob Meeks and Eddie Blake and Rob Selby and uh, Victor Hall and, and Chris Gray and, and uh, Fred Baxter. Florida State's not through. They're coming back down the field. Now the game's tied 17 to 17. Third and three. <clears throat> Big play right here. It's an outstanding play by Eric Ramsey. Makes a play on the quarterback, snatches the ball loose from him. Now it puts them in a fourth and five situation. They decided to go for it. And which was the right call. And this is tremendous effort on the part of Ricky Sutton right here. And throws him for, I think, a, a 15, 20-yard loss. Gives us the ball in great field position. All we got to do now is make a first down. And here's a gr the play of the game offensively. Oh, what a Stan catch. White hitting, hitting uh, Herbert Casey over the middle for, I don't know, 15, 18 yards. Stan just centers it up now for the field goal. The clock's running down. Didn't intend for it to get down to six seconds, but we got it stopped. And Jim Von Weil. Kicks the field goal and makes it a 20 to 17 ball game, and it was a great win for Auburn. But uh, we we played better, and and we played prettier, uh, but I don't think we've ever had a sweeter win. I'll agree, Coach. We'll be back in just a minute. Coach Pat Dye. Mississippi State next week. Start. Well, we got them in Starkville, and and uh, they that's a tough place to play, and they had a great win over Tulane last night, and. I know that Coach Felker will have his team ready, and we've got to, you know, come down off of this one and get ready to play a, a good Mississippi State football team. Remember the possibility of pay-per-view. Check with your local cable company or watch the media early next week to see if that happens. And we'll be back next Sunday with the playback. Coach dies a... The environment. I might have been proud of you for hanging in there and winning, and I don't know who blocked the stage point. Was it uh, Corey? You blocked it, Daryl? Yes. I mean, it's been, it's, been, uh, it's been something like that all year long. One, one, we hang in there together as a team, and then somebody come up with something at the end to win for you, and it's that way again today. I've been around, around a lot of football teams, and uh, <coughs> at some point in time, you know, when this football team, if, if we do, and when we do, 
then I think you're going to be something sure enough special. Right now, I still think we're wrestling with them angels and we can't put it all together. We just got to keep on keeping on. And uh, great job by the specialty teams today on the on the coverage of the kick and not letting the little guy get anything out of that kicking game. And blocked it at the end right there. But we got the one block that hurt us. But again, we're in it together. So. Defense did what you had to do, and offense did what you had to do, and the kicking game contributed. I'm happy to win it, and I know you are too. It's one of them you're gonna win some of these along the way that you're glad to get out alive, and let's get dressed and get ourselves on the bus and go home. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday in Starkville, Mississippi, the Tigers held on 17 to 16. You have to have a stout heart to watch this game, coach. Well, our chaplain and my good friend, Reverend Baggett, uh, told me after the game yesterday, he said, he said, Coach, he said, uh, I think the Lord's going to get confused if we keep going like this. He said, last week we were praying to make a kick. <laughs> this week we were praying to block a kick. <laughs> so uh, it's one of those things that we, it, uh, we're, still on, we're still living on the edge. And, and uh, you know, I don't, the game was about like I expected it to be. I, I, I expected us to win, and uh, <clears throat> I think the players did too, but I knew it wasn't going to be easy. I knew Mississippi State had a good football team, and they'd be ready to play. Uh, I knew that we weren't uh, going to run up and down the field against them, even though we had over 400 yards offense. Uh, and, and Phil, we, we uh, you know, we had actually three turnovers counting the, the block punt, and, and uh, we didn't get any turnovers from Mississippi State, and and that probably was a contributing factor right there in making the game as close as it was. In fact, I know it was. And <coughs> but they played mighty well, and and uh, you know it was. Uh, we were coming off of the emotional win, and I was, you know, I I knew we were playing a good football team in a very difficult set of circumstances, and and uh, we were fortunate to win. There's no no doubt about it. A great great effort on the part of Darrell Crawford at the end. Uh, just took it on himself to win the football game. He got the penetration and, and, uh, and blocked it. it. You know, you don't block many coming from where he came from. Now let's go in the dressing room right now, and we'll begin with the, those coaches coming around and congratulating Darrell for his big play. <laughs> I was getting through the whole time. I was just overjudging him. Where'd you come from? Uh, I just uh, came from the outside. Uh, the few times they did kick it uh, during the game, I was getting through, but I was just overjudging. I was going too far inside, and he was kicking to the left the whole game. And I said, uh, you know, this particular time, you can't overjudge it, and you got you to go in, and you got to lay out for your team. And basically, uh, everybody else did his job, and uh, I came free and blocked it. We held James. I don't think he had a punt return over 10 yards or a kickoff return. Chris did a great job of kicking him in the end zone, which which uh, is your best coverage. When you can get him in the end zone, we don't have to have any coverage. So uh, overall, I think we did a good job today. We're playing okay, but we're not really making things happen. We had our chances today to get three or four interceptions, and the ball hit us right in our hands. We, we let we let them just get away some kind of way. And it's the same with the offense. We, we moved the ball across the 50 several times today, and we're just not putting teams away. Is that the big, best three-yard run you ever made? <laughs> Definitely. You know, we had to. We, we got it when we had to have it. And I have to give credit to the offensive line and to, to James. They did a great job blowing the men off the ball. And just a matter of me getting it and out of the hole. There was a 16 base, and I came off the ball. And best lick of the night, Stacy drilled me in the back, knocked me a couple more yards, and they got the first down. <laughs> hey, the name of the game is winning, baby. It ain't how you get it done, it's just getting the job done. You have no doubt this team can get it together next week? I don't doubt about it. Uh, so far, we've been playing on the edge this year, but it's about time for Auburn to wake up and uh, just put a 60-minute game together. So as long as we win, uh, we'll be happy with the outcome. The pig with 55... Couldn't ask for a better day. Well, it was a beautiful day for football, uh, Phil, and, and it was Mississippi State's homecoming, and, you know, they had a lot of things that, uh, besides a good football team going that way. Uh, we, our specialty team play was really outstanding yesterday, except for the block punt, and that's a pretty big exception because you just can't, uh, I mean, you know, that turned the momentum of the game totally around. This is their third <coughs> possession after an Auburn turnover. They, uh, Shell does a good job for at quarterback, and they've got a good scheme of, of running and, and uh, misdirection passing game, and 
But uh, our defensive front played well yesterday. I don't think they had, they might have had a little over 100 yards rushing and about 187 passing a lot. And but uh, overall, I think you know we we it looked like we played pretty well defensively up front. We just didn't make anything happen. We, you know, the ball was on the ground a couple of times. We didn't get it, and uh, we had a couple of passes. Uh, I guess three passes in our hands for interceptions that we didn't get. <laughs> Auburn will kick the field goal, and we coming back right now, and we make a, a nice drive right here. Answer the field goal with a touchdown in six plays. Dan hits uh, Herbert Casey there, and Dale Overton on the play before, and uh, we moved Stan around a little more yesterday, and, and I think that we've got to do that. Uh, Same drive, second quarter. This is just a uh, takeoff on the part of uh, Greg Taylor, and... and they actually got past on the fence. The guy tried to hold him once they had him beat, and, and uh, Greg caught it anyway and took it down to the eight or nine yard line. Here Stan comes in and throws to Greg for the touchdown. His seventh TD reception of the year. <coughs> we uh, out front seven to three and, 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 and pretty much take control of the game right here. You know, they're, they're making some first downs and, and doing some things, but basically we're controlling the ball. It was fine play by Darrell. It looked like Darrell played good yesterday. I saw him make several plays. and made a big play downfield and then blocked the punt and uh, field. The extra point. This is third and six. <coughs> she had that quarterback did a great job of, a, of avoiding a rush yesterday. Just, he, he didn't run the ball and hurt us running it any. Just right here, he just, you know, he'd slide one way or the other or get away from the rush and throw the ball. And, and did an excellent job for him. That was another third down play and stopped him on the next drive. This guy really had a hunting day. Ooh. He did, and, and you know, we we did a decent job of returning punts. I think you know, Shane had every 89 yards to return, and we tried to average the first down. <coughs> and Stan throwing to Victor Hall, and uh, coming back, and Darrell Williams gave us some big plays yesterday at tailback. Of course, Stacy got back in to his old groove running the football. Here's a nice run and cuts it back across the grain and picks up a nice gain in the first down. Big play coming. This is a play action. We actually have worked on this and had it ready for Florida State, and I don't think we called it. And Tony Richardson takes it in for the score, and we go up 14 to 3. And like I said, we've pretty much taken control of the football game right here. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mississippi State is a great play right here by Derek, uh, Eric Ramsey. <coughs> they mark the first down out at the 43 now. They, uh, he covered for one of our linebackers that he comes up again, and that's, uh, I guess that's uh, Alex, Alex Thomas. Mm -hmm. Richard Shea bats out one down at the line of scrimmage. Yep, third and long. Uh, they do, the, the, the scheme is fine play by Eric Ramsey and, and uh, Corey Barlow and Ricky Sutton out there and David Rocker. <coughs> James Willis started at inside line back in the place of Carrick and Cunningham yesterday. Nice play on the screen, good block downfield. We probably don't get enough out of the screen. It's a strange call here. Yeah, I don't. I don't uh, we're gonna have to send that one to the league office. So that was, you know, that was. I mean, that was mighty, 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 mighty technical. It is. But uh, they, that, I'll take responsibility for that block right there. That, I, we we were right. It was right before the half, and I told I told. Richard Nail to kick the ball out of bounds, and I think he was thinking about kicking it out of bounds rather than getting the ball off. And you know, I, I just we should have just kicked the ball on down the field and covered it just like we had been doing all day long. And and uh, but at least we didn't get it protected, we didn't get it off, and regardless, probably a little of both of it. We'll be back in just one minute. Uh, standard every week that that, uh, it, that you know that it's going to be good enough to win and then hopefully and we'll get to those big games that we can elevate it a little bit all right we'll be back for the exciting second half in just a minute
third quarter with uh, Mississippi State uh, with the ball after an Auburn turnover. Well, we uh, going in a set, moving the football and so, and that's a little Roberts kid, and he just started back playing for him. Nice play by Darrell Crawford making a tackle way down there. I think it's about a 30-yard run. They have several backs in the people's <coughs> heads, and they are quick, and they and they they are good. And I, I don't really understand that call. It was ruled incomplete. It should have been an interception or a completion, one of the two. Because it bounced off his chest. It, didn't it never hit the enough. ground. Mm -hmm. That's a fine play right there by who? Uh, Larry Young. Right. I believe in, in they, they, they fake a field goal here, and, and uh, the coaches did a good job of calling a uh, safe defense and playing the, playing the fake all the way, and uh, we get the ball out in good field position. <clears throat> Stan throwing to Dale Overton on the on the boundary, and second and two at the 44. Wanted to play Alex Smith yesterday and played him a little bit and got it to him two or three times, but he's been looking good in practice. And then as I tell you, we just excellent punt right here. Penn Penn State back, good pooch kick by Richie Nail, and Richie did a great job of punting yesterday, except for that one. <laughs> and uh, and that's that is that's big when you can pin somebody up down inside the ten yard line. It's gonna lead to the field goal. It's incomplete. It's covered by John Wiley. And uh, we had I think three or four starters that didn't play yesterday. Daryl Cunningham uh, didn't play and uh, Dennis Wallace and Benny Pierce played a little bit, got back some. Lamar Rogers still didn't play yesterday, and and uh, Dennis Wallace didn't play. They're stand throwing over the middle to, <coughs> to Herbert Casey. Beginning of a 14-play drive. This is a sneak play right here that we run and and uh, go for a yard, and I believe that was a fourth down play. Fourth and it? one, yes. And make pick up the first down. Same drive, fourth quarter now. Stand. Throws out in the flat to Tony Richardson, and Tony takes it down inside the 10-yard line, and we get it on down, and end up they stop us, and we have to settle for a field goal. And I didn't like that, because a touchdown right there probably would have put the game away. Here's a great improvement in the kicking game, too, Coach. But uh, that's right. The Chris Dickerson did a great job kicking off for us yesterday, and Tony James is probably the most explosive weapon they got. And uh, as David Rocket chasing Shell, and they have a tip ball instead of us getting it, they get it. He leads the nation in punt returns and is second in conference <coughs> in kickoff returns. So he's he's a weapon that you took away from him yesterday. At uh, Galloway, they've got uh, James Galloway and Roberts are three little guys. They weigh about 180, 85 pounds apiece, and they are quick. And we bring the ball off the goal line here after and a great punt. All right, this is this is. Uh, this is a big, big drive for us in series here. We take the ball and drive it, I guess, down to around that 40-yard line, but mm -hmm. we're 43-yard line. 14 40. plays in this drive. <coughs> Look at that punt right there. Of course, that one goes into the end zone, but Richie really hit the ball well, and, and I'm excited about his progress and what he's done. They come back, and is this that is This, this is a drive? touchdown drive. Okay. This is the uh, end of the game, and... We getting you can see we're getting pressure on Shell and getting close to him, but he does a great job of avoiding the rush and getting rid of the ball. Got a little bit too long there, but we have good coverage. I, I believe that was uh, Frankie Stanchunas and third and ten. They're going to get an interference call <coughs> here. As Walter Tate, and, uh, that keeps the drive going. Yeah, we get a penalty. We got them stopped and as. This is a great play right here by Mississippi State. They do an excellent job of faking and setting up and throwing back. And that shield has got a strong arm. <coughs> 2.33 left in the game when he scores. Well, I'm sitting right here figuring out whether we can block the field, block the extra point. And Darrell Crawford, you can see him right there coming in from the right. The penetration. Gets that, gets left, that hand. left hand up, blocks it, wins the game for us. You know, a lot of times a, a game will come down to one play, and that was one of them yesterday. <coughs> Heads up on John Wiley. If he could have scored, well, would have counted. 
right here. I mean, it would have counted two points for us. Now, right here, Shane was, and he looked, he, you can see Shane's a smart football player. He looked at the official to get a signal as to whether he could down it or not in the, in the official. And I believe the official was wrong in not giving the signal because Shane didn't know where he was on the field. He didn't know whether he had to bring it, bring it out or what. So he brought it out to the four-yard line. Here's what I think is the biggest play of the game. <laughs> third, and, third and two. Blocked by, by Chris Gray and, and Rob Selby and, and Kim Tillman and Bob Meeks and James Joseph and uh, Fred to, Baxter. And able to run the clock out after and that big made, first down. Made the first down to let us run the clock out and not have to give it back up to Mississippi State. We'll be back in just a minute. Coach, you reckon the Auburn fans want to love this team if they're afraid to? Well, I think <laughs> they love the football team, and, they, you know, they wouldn't have had as many people in Starkville yesterday as we did, but I think probably a lot of them thought we were going to go over there and run away with it. And probably a lot of Auburn people didn't go because they didn't think it was going to be much of a football game, but I wasn't fooled. And, uh, and, uh, There's no doubt about this week. Well, that's right. I mean, you, you, you're looking at a, at a football team that's, beat uh, Southern Mississippi 34 to 21 and actually they gave Southern Mississippi two touchdowns on fumbles. Picked them, Southern picked up two fumbles and ran them in the end zone for touchdowns. And uh, they've got a great, great defensive football team. Outstanding offensive football team, great specialty team. And they play so well at home. <coughs> and yeah, they do. They, uh, you know, if, if uh, the only thing that I say, uh, Phil, is that if you're going to be a champion, you got to win under all circumstances. And if you're going to be a champion, you got to win in Gainesville. All that's right. Where, that's where it falls this year. Auburn, Florida, next week. ESPN, it starts at 6.30 Saturday, and we'll have the replay on Sunday. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Coach Dye's apparel provided by... I'm mighty proud of every one of you in here. Mm -hmm. Coaches, managers, trainers, players, uh, everybody that's been connected with this football team. And um, tonight was, as you know, it, 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 could be, it could be what we considered long overdue. But I think you, you, what you saw tonight was the power of togetherness. And you know, we, we kind of shook there a little bit in the second half. But you know, when you got that, that unity, you know, it doesn't bother you near as much. You come right back and did what you had to do to salt the game away. And it's an offense, defense, kicking game win. All of it contributed, all of it played. Uh, I, I can't, you know, I really can't say any, see any phase of the game where there was any let up tonight. There was a little frustration on the part, a couple of turnovers there that we had offensively. But, you know, as long as we're fighting, as long as we're scratching and and I, I got no problem with that. I mean, that's, that's, that's a part of football. And we can correct those things on, but we, you know, what, what was, I was interested in was, you know, what's in our hearts. How you feel about one another and, and how excited you are about uh, this football team and being a part of it and the challenge and the opportunity that we got when we go to Birmingham. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, uh, enjoy, enjoy this, enjoy this win. And it's a big one. Don't you ever, don't you ever doubt it. It keeps you in contention, man. And, and, and I'm, it, it, some of you may take it for granted.
but it's no small thing when you play football in this conference and have to go into all of the places that you have to go into to play to be a part of a football team and program that has won three in a row and got a chance to share another one. The Auburn Football Review, as you may have guessed, Auburn rolled over the University of Georgia last night, 33 to 10, their fourth straight victory over the Dogs. Almost like as good as cheering from home, Coach. Well, it was a big win for us, and what a difference a win makes. Uh, there's been a lot of hurt and frustration on the part of everybody <laughs> connected with this football team, the fans, the players, the coaches, and, and um, you know, we can't erase all the things that have happened, but last night's certainly did ease the pain a little bit, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, I'll agree, Coach. And with that, we will go into the dressing room and uh, see some more uh, pains eased at, right after the game last night. I was really into this game. I knew it was going to, it meant a lot to me, and I know I had a lot of guys over there who I knew, so I wanted them to just go out and style it all. Does, uh, does Big Brother know you, you made all of Um, I think so by now. He was in tune to the television, so I think he knows by now, and I'll be expecting this phone call. Yeah, we had a lot of big plays on defense. We finally got some turnovers for the offense and got some good field position, and we started getting some points out of it. Was it fun tonight? It was very fun tonight. It was a whole lot of fun. You know, people flying around throwing their body in the air, and, you know, it's like old Auburn football, where it's we supposed to be. I, I can't believe we threw it, because I looked, first I looked back, and I saw John Wiley over the top, had number two, and Corey had uh, number one, and I said, you know, ain't no way he's going to throw the ball, so I'm just going to anticipate the run. But, you know, it's just like he went in the, uh, the huddle and said, look, Dennis, you run the out, and he just threw it right to me, and I, you know, I just can't believe it. It reminded me of the defense from 88, when Tracy Rocker was up front, Benji Rowland, Ron Starworth, Carlos Sheen delivering lists from the secondary and guys break on the ball we play it the, the old way the Auburn way when are you gonna break one of these things well I don't know you know it seems like uh, it's the kick is always there you know when I get ready to look back I see other guys pursuing so I and then I can do you can get by everybody but the kicker huh? everybody with the kick <laughs> how come the reverse always works against Georgia I don't know they're not ready for it <laughs> even though we beat them with every every game every uh, year yeah. they still just don't prepare for it and so we beat them again tonight and it's great Boy, you made a heck of a run, though. Yeah, I had some good blocking, though. Uh, you know, the uh, offensive line did a great job of blocking. I think they came with a blitz on that particular play. And uh, I knew I had to make a few cuts and adjustment to get in the end zone. And I did, and it was fun. This was a big confidence builder for us. And and uh, I think it, it, we blended together. I think it was kind of like last year. You know, they really, Auburn came, came together. We really came together last year about this time. And, and it's very important when you got Alabama coming up in two weeks. And they've been playing well lately, and it's going to be a big challenge for us. What a rivalry, the oldest in the South. Always a great game, too. I don't care what's on the line, Coach. Well, and you know the thing over the years, it, it really hasn't made any difference where, where the game was being played as to who won. Yeah. Uh, I was concerned about the football game for sure because, uh, you know, the way we had been playing, we, hadn't, we weren't really playing well enough to go out and, and take anything for granted. We start off in the kicking game was outstanding last night. Bill Richie Neal did a great job of punting. Vaughn Wild was four for four, and looks we got a big break right here on the first play of the ball game. And it's Wallace on the out route. <coughs> and uh, we take this one in for a touchdown and hit James Joseph on a, a little flat route, and he takes it down inside the five. And that was a third and two play there. We come back on a of a sneak play and hit uh, Stan hits. Victor Hall for the touchdown, and, and uh, that's a, if you want to draw up the script as how to, you want to start one, that would be how you want to start. And our defense, you heard the kids talking in the dressing room, it looked like the old Auburn defense flying around, having fun, and excited, and <clears throat> I could sense this thing coming, and, and uh, I'm not so sure we wasn't there last week, it just was something that, that uh, but last night it was a complete football game and we played 60 minutes for the first time all year long. And that, uh, that was a, something that had been really concerning me because they had, they had Stan hitting, Stan really threw some outstanding balls last night and he had a couple picked, uh, one picked off, I guess. 
It was third and six. So had a couple of batted down at the line of scrimmage. That, you know, they didn't get much penetration at times. And the guy standing on the line of scrimmage and not rushing, it's easy for him to reach up and bat a ball down sometimes. 29-yard field goal. That's 10 or nothing. And, of course, again, you know, the field position in the first half was fantastic and it created by the defense and the kicking game. And there's Clarence Morton making a big play on the kickoff, got him backed up again. <coughs> as James Willis, James played good. Uh, David Rockle played good. Lamar Rogers had some big plays. Darrell Crawford, Carrick and Cunningham, Walter Tate, as James Willis and Ricky Sutton on a, on a big play. The uh, secondary was just uh, a lot more active than they've been. John Wiley and, and Dennis Wallace and Eric Ramsey and Corey Barlow had a great energy. That was a great catch right there by Fred Baxter, a one-handed mm. grab and just tremendous play. And Fred made a couple of big plays last night. Stacy ran like old Stacy, and <laughs> James Joseph had some big plays and did a good job of blocking his fullback. And Third and three. He stood in there. <coughs> Herbert Casey had uh, several big, big plays last night in addition to running back kickoffs. And, and, uh, He's excited. We, we still would like to get these balls in the end zone when we get them down there close like this, but Jim Von Wire comes in and makes it 13 to nothing, and we're getting points on the board. We, didn't, we weren't uh, Getting the touchdowns, but we were getting points, and that's what's important. There's Carrington Cunningham and Lamar Rogers and <coughs> Walter Tate. As, uh, who? Walter and I'm not sure who else in there. And Cunningham, Tampa. <coughs> great interception by Corey Barlow. Had man coverage on him and just stayed inside of him and took it away. And again, we got the ball out in midfield. We don't. Auburn kicked a field goal right after that. Now we're going to show you <coughs> defensive plays the rest of the quarter. Some great Good play by John Wiley. Pressure by Ricky Sutton. He's, we got pressure coming, and, and I don't know whether it was a broken route or what, but wasn't anybody downfield. And there again is pressure, and David Rocker and Dennis Wallace and Jason Merchant and A fine play by by Eric Ramsey. <coughs> and the, that wad and that each one you can just throw a blanket over enough to play in defense the way you're supposed to play it. There's good pressure in the sack by Lamar Rogers and Mike Campbell's back there and there's a fine tackle and hit by James Willis. See him a lot. <coughs> John, John Wilson and, and Richard Shave alternating up front and, and uh, the entire defense played well and contributed. And there's, again, pressure and they try to quarterback. They heard us with the quarterback draw a couple of times last night and, and uh, we blitzed more than usual last night and, and uh, it uh, hurt us a couple of times, hurt us on touchdown run. And uh, it hurt us a couple of times when, when Dupree pulled the ball down and, and ran with it. They, we had our linebackers and secondary running with receivers, and he was running down the field with them. Yeah, he really was. We'll see some of that in the second half. When we the Auburn uh, radio talk show, Tiger Talk, uh, Coach Dye's call-in show, is moving to Wednesday night this week because of Thursday, of course, being the Thanksgiving uh, holiday. And they're going to do the program at the Auburn Conference Center this Wednesday night so that if you'd like to come down and visit with Coach, uh, and watch him do the program, then you're welcome. 7 o'clock Wednesday night, this one time only for Tiger Talk, the Auburn radio call-in show. This one ought to be fun, Coach. Well, they always, they were always off when you win. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we had we had one down there early in the season and had a good time. All right. And uh, Wednesday night, this, this time at 7 o'clock, and we'll be back with the second half. We're on a quick start in just a minute. Bands there last night. The great Auburn band did a great job, Coach. Well, it's it great. That's a big part of college football, and has two seniors that played a lot of football at Auburn right there. Yeah, they, how about the memories of those guys? <coughs> mm. Rob Selby and 
Excuse me. They start off throwing, coming out, throwing the second half and completion of Herbert Case in a nice run on the sweep, a good block by James Joseph and, and uh, started Chris Gray at uh, tackle last night and, and uh, there's another fine catch, throw and catch by Stan White and, and uh, Fred Baxter and another big play to Victor Hall and got our tight ends a little more involved in the game last night and I don't think there's any doubt that it helped our offense. We take it down and kick a field goal and make it 19 to nothing and that's a, probably the best drive we've had after the half since the Ole Miss game. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Here we get another big play and turnover and uh, Larry Blakeney calling the offense and does a great job right there coming with the reverse and we get a quick one. They got the blitz on and good block. Ed King, Chris Gray, uh, Victor Hall downfield and, and uh, Eddie Blake. And <coughs> Ten quick points to open the half. Right and uh, there's David Rocker. Eddie Blake is downfield on that uh, reverse also. That fellow there's got that got that pipe smoking in it. <laughs> <coughs> this is their young quarterback. He's, he's a, really nifty. He's, he is quick and he can run. And uh, good defense. Again, as they pick this one in, I believe, don't they? Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, key first down for Georgia right here. Good running. That's where the tailback for Montgomery that uh, played well for him last night, but he's played well for him all year long. It's a good run right here. I believe the officials must have clipped on that right there. <laughs> <coughs> but anyway, it was a good play by Georgia. And, and uh, nice this, to see this young man. Right. Uh, Looks like all of our backs ran well last night. Uh, Mr. Electron make a 20 yard run and comes back to a six yard, seven yard run. Offensive line Bob Meeks and Rob Selby and. and uh, Anthony Redmond and Wayne Gandy and <coughs> but Tim, the holding, Tim Tillman. The holding penalty fine, stops that drive. Fine play and throw and catch to Dell Overton. Here's a big play right here to uh, Herbert Casey at the five and, and Herbert is, is really playing well. It's a great run by Stacy Danley and Stacy got the ball in the end zone. We get a holding penalty here, and I believe this is one where they stop us in the field. They turn it over two plays later. <coughs> so now we're in the fourth quarter. You can see the, the pressure coming up field, and we blitz him, and you know, maybe he just throws the ball down. We got man coverage and get big plays out of it. It's People want, to, people want to know why we don't blitz a lot. Those long runs last night and that touchdown runs is part of the reason we don't blitz a lot. <coughs> There's Cash and Cunningham and James Willis. On a third and four, so they have to Big play. Though. Benny Pierce was back last night. It's good to see Benny back. He's been out for about six, seven weeks. And uh, just uh, Ricky Sutton came back after his pool growing and they certainly helped out. And again, you can see our people getting around the football and, and having fun playing defense. And this is after an Auburn turnover at the one, and they're coming out and hold them on the goal line. Reggie Barlow had a couple of big plays last night. And his, Shane Washington and Shane did a great job of fielding punts last night and running them back. And I uh, had one, I know, for over 25 yards, and, and that one looked like for about 10. Fine run by Stacy Danley. <coughs> this is the one for the seniors, punching it in. Greg Thompson played some at, at center last night, and he's done a good job spelling Bob Meeks all year. Here comes the touchdown. And that makes it. 32 at a point after makes it 33 and that winds up a, a good night of Auburn football. And a footnote right here. Alex Smith, 
and we've been wanting to play Alex all year long, and, and uh, this is the reason we want to play him. He's got the ability to make give us a big play at tailback, and there's Miss Sue and Wanda and Pat. And Coach's friends. box is happy, looks to me yeah, like Absolutely, they look like they got that little thing down right there. All right, and we'll and be that, back in just, excuse me? I wish, yeah. it, I wish it had it down after every ball game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back in just a minute. Good lumber should withstand almost anything, like this fence. Built with Osmo's pressure treated pine from Great Southern Wood. The lumber with a 40-year guarantee. And we use Osmo's deck screws for better holding power and Osmo's clear water repellent and stains for that extra defense. Speaking of extra defense, Ring here, let me keep this. So remember, if it doesn't have Osmos on the yellow label, believe me, you don't want it. Hey, Sarah, what are you eating? A Ziggler's bologna sandwich. Mama says it's seasoned to please. What does seasoned to please mean? It means my mom knows what I like. <laughs> you bet she does. You see, Ziegler products are made with only the finest, freshest cuts of meats, blended with a secret combination of spices and natural seasonings, which gives you Ziegler's own seasoned-to-please taste. I already know that. So when it comes to taste, pick Ziegler. It's seasoned-to-please. Her name is Venus de Milo, and she's one of the most revered works of art in the world. She was discovered hundreds of years ago on the Greek island of Milos with her arms mysteriously missing. For centuries, no one knew where they were or what they looked like. Until now.